All right, all right, all right. Good evening, everyone, and happy Thursday to y'all. How's everybody doing tonight? All is well. All is well. Mr. Joe got that, that phone off a of mute this time. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Joe. I love it. <laughs> I love Man, you it. didn't supposed this, to expose that. I wasn't supposed to notice that, Joe. I wasn't supposed to notice that. <laughs> Y'all, I thought I'd get. I, listen, I thought I'd give Shelly a little, uh, a little teaser with her boyfriend on here tonight with uh, Jonathan McRell. <laughs> you know it. You know that's my husband in my head. Y'all know. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as she heard her husband, I saw her <laughs> rocking over there. I said, get in the mood now. Get in the mood. That's it. That's all I need. Little J, J Matt. J Matt. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> well, all right. Well, guys, we want to welcome all of our guests on tonight. Not just get y'all. I guess y'all are family. We appreciate y'all yeah. joining in with us every Thursday night here for our, our uh, Singles Let's Talk. And uh, we have been on a series for the month of July talking about uh, about time. You know, it's time to this and that, time to this and that. We're going to talk a little bit tonight about it's time to slow down. But before we get started, y'all did not miss a Cheryl Dunlap bless our socks off last Thursday <laughs> night. Ooh, Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Yay, yay. She did a fantastic job yes. with that message on last week. And I think we still row, row, row and row in our boats gently <laughs> down the street. Amen. <laughs> and yeah, Amen. catching that revelation yeah. on that. Yes. How you guys feeling tonight? Miss Cheryl, how you doing? You feeling good from last week's message? You ready for another round tonight? I am. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> good. I must, good. Um, I must share You're something. Incredible with too. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Joe said he's gonna share something with you, Cheryl. Um Sunday. Oh, okay. Sunday I'm at church, right? And uh, uh -huh. Pastor Robinson is uh, getting ready to preach. And he said he was riding along in his car, and he decided to just have a moment of stillness and silence. So he turned his radio off. And so um, the topic was, oh, it eludes me right now, but it was, and he said, the song come, come to him just out of the blue. Um, and he said, the song goes something like this. Row, row, That's row your mouth. boat gently down the stream. What? I almost uh, got up out of the church and ran out. But I composed no, myself. No. And, I said, and what I get out of that is this. The word of God goes out. And it's just amazing. He said that. He said, I had a nursery rhyme going in my head. Wow. And it says, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. And it tied into his message. But I just wanted to share that with you because I was like, wow, look at God. Yeah. It's amazing. amazing how thing. God, yes, it's amazing how God will bring that. it's amazing it was, how God will bring things to us together, you know, like the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And we're on pretty much yeah. the same conversations of topic. And, you know, it, it lets me know that God is concerned about us, you know, even yes. use little simple things like that to get our attention. So yeah, that was, that was probably very coincidental and, 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 and spirit led also at the same time, Joe. So yeah. Yes, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. very concerned That's about us. Amazing. Amazing. Yes, Thank it you. is. Absolutely. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, y'all ready for another great show on tonight? Uh, we are excited to uh, come in just a little bit and talk uh, a little bit more about it's time to slow down. Uh, but before we get started, we're going to open up with a word of prayer. And I'm going to ask my sister. Oh, Faith is getting her hair done. Uh, Miss Shelley, how about you? You want to open us up on tonight in prayer and then we can move forward? Sure. All right, all heads bowed, eyes closed. Father God, we thank you so much once again for allowing us to be here another Thursday night. 
Uh, God, just allow the words of this young man that's coming to us tonight to just uh, plant a seed in our hearts and plant a seed in our minds um, and, and to, to take the words uh, that he says uh, as words coming straight from your from you, Lord. Um, we thank everyone for coming in tonight. Um, hopefully that uh, we see you guys again and uh, you are blessed by the conversation tonight. Um, we thank you always, God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank amen. you, Cheryl. Thank you. Yes. And uh, well, tonight we're going to talk about the time to slow down. And I think it's a very timely message, you know, uh, because, you know, the world we're living in right now, it seems like everybody's just in a hurry, you know, for, you know, this and that. I, I was on this uh, clubhouse call on today and it was a very interesting conversation that they had. They were talking about you know, is it right for a woman to ask the man to pay all of her bills? And and it, it was just it was just crazy. And it was so interesting to hear all the conversations around. And it wasn't as secular as you would think that it would. It was really some good conversation that they had. And there was this one lady that was on there. Uh, she was making her statement around. Um, the type of person that she wanted in life. She wanted, well, the type of person that she was, not the type of person that she really just wanted. Uh, she was sharing with everyone that um, her, her image and her desire uh, for a relationship and even for her life uh, was to uh, be able to be a stay-at-home mom, you know, because she wanted to slow life down and be able to be home to take care of her children when she got married and she and her husband started having children. And she needed her spouse. She needed someone that had a like mindset like that, that would, you know, um, you know, be able to, you know, go along with what her dream and what her vision was. So a lot of the room was coming up against her, this and that. But it was until she really came in and explained, you know, so she wasn't backing down to the conversation. I don't care who came on there and said what. Right, she wasn't right. backing down to the conversation at all. And she had some really, really val valid points. And the guys were coming on and they were saying, well, it's not right. You know, in the world that we're living in right now, you know, it almost takes two households to, you know, make for a good income and, you know, different things like that to be able to take care of things like that. And she told me, she said, I never said that I was coming to the table with nothing. That's she right. said, before I came to the table, she said, I already have houses. I already have stocks. I already have all of that. And the guys had jumped the conclusion to think that she was just coming in like, you know, maybe, you know, somebody just wanted somebody to take care of her. She said, no, that was never the idea. She said, that's why I can make my request known to individuals and I can stand flat footed on what it is that I want because I am bringing something to the table. Anyway, as they went on, it opened up another conversation. This gentleman came in and he started talking to the men about um, um, about how uh, a lot of a lot of men have lost their way when it comes down to being providers, and he 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 kind of came up against their train of thought uh, when it came down to not wanting to be with a woman like that, and he said, but that was God's original design was for the woman to be home and to take care of her children. And y'all would be amazed at how many men were on there that said that they were pro their wife being at home, taking care of the child, raising the children and different things like that. Amazing, amazing conversation. But I think the whole thing around it all was that sometimes we have to slow down enough to have those kind of conversations and not wait until you actually get into a, um, you know, into a situation or whatever. And you start, you know, sharing, well, you know, I wanted to be able to be at home or, you know, the man had whatever desires that he had. But to sit down at the table to see, can we walk together on one accord? And I think it is very important for us all uh, to ask the right questions about what are we moving too fast with? Are we, are we moving so fast to where we're not stopping to ask the right questions? Uh, are we so busy wanting to be in a in a quick relationship or whatever, and you don't even stop to get your get your thoughts together? 
Uh, that's what we're going to be talking about. Not, not necessarily all the time around relationships, but mostly about us, ourselves. Uh, we do have a guest coming on tonight. My son, Ahmad, is going to be calling in around 725. Uh, most of you know that Ahmad is incarcerated, uh, but there are ways. You know, we talk on the phone all the time and and we kind of tested it about two weeks ago, and his speaker <laughs> came through very loud on the phone. <laughs> so we came up with a grand idea. He, he was so excited about the conversation that he was like, Mom, I like that. I like what y'all are doing. He likes stimulating <laughs> conversation. Yeah, so yeah. Amadi's going to come in and uh, <laughs> talk with all of us. We're going to all be in the conversation together while we talk about that process of slowing down. We're going to talk about realizing the importance of listening. And I think that, you know, what the Bible says, with all of your getting, make sure that you get a good understanding yeah. and make sure. I, I think Mrs. Uh, Shanita said this last night on the um, the um, a covenant marriage and relationship last night. She says she's working on listening to her spouse more and not uh, listening to understand instead of listening to respond. Yeah. You know, because sometimes we already have our response as to what we're going to say, but we stop to realize that when it comes down to adding other people into our lives or doing things together, we have to literally listen to understand. And then once we listen to understand, we teach other people to understand us as well, because it's like, I'm not trying to quickly give you an answer back or a clap back on what I think it is that you're doing and what it is that I think you're saying. But by me being understanding, what I'm doing is I'm planting seeds uh, into the life of people that come into my life to let them know that I'm listening to you just as much as I want you to listen to me. So it's going to be an interesting conversation. I just want you all to start thinking about it and be ready to jump in uh, to the conversation. Then we're going to talk about recognizing God's hand in the situation. You know, sometimes we have to slow down enough uh, to recognize when God is answering our prayers. And sometimes he's answering our prayers in a strange way, but you got to be willing to move <laughs> in the direction and want to yeah. hear what it is that the spirit has to say. And then last, we're going to talk about the importance of expressing ourselves clearly, making sure that we express ourselves clearly. Uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Shelly, I'm going to need your help, uh, possibly midway. Uh, after we finish talking about recognizing God's hand, uh, if you would help me to reset the room, uh, because the way that they have it set up with the mod, he could only be on the call for a short while. I've asked him to, once we do the reset, that he gets off of the line and calls us back. By the time you we get back on, we get back into motion, he'll be back on the line again. So we'll continue our conversation with that. So if you'll help me with that. So the last thing is the importance of expressing ourselves clearly. So let's let's jump into the conversation already. When it when you when it comes down to talking about uh time to slow down, what what comes to your mind? You know, whether it be relationship, whether it be this season of life you're in, maybe you realize that, you know, I'm I'm starting and stopping too much. I'm repeating <laughs> myself too much. You know, maybe I'm being misunderstood a lot. What What is it? What What do you think about that's anybody? What do you think about when you hear that conversation is time to slow down? What's what comes to your mind? I have a good one. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Um, hey, hey, I would say, uh, for example, uh, with my son, you know, sometimes when we had a long day and um, when I have a long day and he's trying to talk to me, I'm trying to learn how to slow down with my with my 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 brain because I'm scatterbrained. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I, I, my mind go 50 miles per hour. 50 miles per hour, I can be thinking about something else. And so when I think about slow down, I think about focusing, like you said, and understanding what it is that he wants and what he needs versus thinking about all this 10,000 things I got going on at, yeah. at such and such or whatever. And so um, um, even with the mate, just learning how to give them that attention and slow down listen and understand and not try to be so in a rush to to answer mm -hmm. and get doing what you want to do far as you can you know you might be tired and have a long day and want to you know do this and do that but just slow down 
relax, calm down. Look, it's easier said than done. But mm-hmm. you know, trying to definitely work on that. Um, Cartrell, he every I don't know what it is. Every night I say go to bed. He want to have all the time of the day to want to talk. But right now he yeah. on the video. So he he don't want to <laughs> talk to <you> right now. <laughs> he want to do it in his time. Yeah, he want to yeah, do it. Right. In his time. But when I say it's time to go to bed, he said, "Well, Mama, I want to talk to you about something." Like, oh, oh. <laughs> I said. And so, anyways. I, I'm trying to, um, um, even though I'm tired and he's on the game, I, I, I try to get him that attention and listen to what he has to say because it's not like, you know, I've been at home all day. I'm gone eight hours. He on the game. It's, it's, it's not like we, we, we've we had much time, you know, spent with each other. So I, I'm trying yeah. to learn, to, you know, be active and listen to, you know, what he has to say. Even with my mama, she bored, you know, she's in Tyler, you know, uh, uh, she, she, she don't want nothing just calling to, to see what I want and, and so I just have to slow down and because sometimes I you know I have it bad but I said mama I got to go and I got to do that but I have to think I got one mama and if That's something right. happens to her tomorrow I'm gonna regret that I didn't listen to what she had to say because you right. know life is is too short and in time waits for nobody for no one and um you know being an active listener and, and just slowing down uh, can mean a, can make a big difference in in your life and in somebody else's life. So I am definitely trying to work on that mentally and physically. <laughs> yeah, I like that, Sheena. That, but you know what? That that comes from deep reflection too. You know, uh, because I'm, how many of us can agree that sometimes when our children are talking to us, that we're not always present. You know, we're That's like, right. you know, yeah, we're not always there and. And then the, what they say, how we do one thing is how we do a lot of things. And there we are, you know, we spent, we should be at the point where we're spending that quality time with our, with our parents, you know, because they may not, I mean, who's to say who's going to leave first, but right. you know, it's, I, I think it's always the design that, you know, uh, our parents leave before we do. And you want to try to give them as much time and attention as you can. And the great thing about it is guys, you know, by the time, you know, you think about it now, we probably understand our parents more now than we did when we were younger because we're going through some of the things in life that they've gone through. And That's we right. literally need the wisdom, you know, that they give. But you know how it is sometimes when they didn't take out the time with us to listen, we picked up some patterns and some habits just like them. That's and so right. now it's like we throwing that same thing back at them and not realize we have to stop this thing somewhere right. so that we can back that train up and give our kids the attention so that we not repeat that cycle all over again, because yes. I'm quite sure we're missing a whole lot of stuff uh, in right. the middle of, you know, not dialoguing properly with each other. So good one. Good one, Sheena. Anybody else? Mr. Joe? Yeah, well, I was I just wanted to speak to that to Sheena for just a moment, uh, coming from a, a male perspective, you know, and it's good that you give him that time because we have to realize one first and foremost, if he's not talking to you, he's going to talk to somebody else. Oh, isn't that the truth? And, you know, others may not have the good intentions, but if you start the process of actually, even if you're tired, just listen, he's going to always, you're developing a trust factor. He he said, I can go to my mom, even though she tired, but she gonna listen to what I got to say. And when he have situations, he gonna always come to you first. Even after he's out of the household, he gonna come back. He wants mom's approval. So, you know, and I say that, you know, sometimes we in, in such a hurry to be understood that we don't listen to understand. We That's got good. to, you know, I remember going back and I'm gonna make this short with my own son. And I was doing something. He said, dad, I'm trying to talk to you. I said, er? okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. In other words, he said, I want your undivided attention. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, son. So I gave him that. And it may not seem significant what they have to say to you, but that's not the issue. It's it's significant to them. Mm -hmm. 
So they you, they'll pour their heart out to you at that point because they don't have another place to go with that. And so I say to you, keep doing what you're doing. Listen to him. Mm. And, and make sure attentive. Sometimes if he may say, blah, 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 and you say, son, is this what you're saying? Then he gonna know you in tune with him. Mm -hmm. You're not just, you're not just sitting there like a lump on the log, mm -hmm. okay? And, and you know, I just wanted to throw that in there and it's gonna bring, I guarantee you this, it's gonna bring great rewards down the road. I just want to you, speak to you that. You know what, oh, um um, I, I want to say thank you for that because I'm I'm I really am all he has, and right. you know I rather for him to come to me than than go to some stranger. And I want to cherish every moment I have with him while he's young because when he gets to that age and he feel like he don't need me no more, I think that's when 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 all the trouble starts right there. Yes, yes. yes. Right. So um, while he's at that 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 age, that vulnerable age. Um, you're right. I want to make sure I make myself available, even, you know, when I'm tired and, and, mm -hmm. um, and don't mm -hmm. want to be, because even as a, a male, just like we women, we might've grew, grown up without a, a mother or whatever, but, you know, with him growing up without a father, I definitely want to make it my, my priority to be there for him, because as a young black man, it's already hard, harder for yes. them. For us, you know, women, we go through the same, you know, similar struggles. But you know, as a, a young black boy, I want to make sure I'm there for him, uh, to comfort him and um, and give him that the the type of um, you know childhood that I didn't get to have. And right. and one really is is listening and in loving, and, yeah. and those in love and love is, is such a beautiful thing. And so. Yes, uh, it is. Um, I, I didn't get that much love and it was shown differently, but I'm definitely um, I'm trying to make a difference in that. But thank you, Joe. <clears throat> oh, you are. You are. Good. Hey, Good. everyone. Hey. Hey, hey. Faith. Hey, Faith. Hey. <laughs> I am getting, my stylist is going out of town soon, which is Akia. She's here and enjoying the conversation <laughs> as well. Yes. And uh, she she was commenting as an older child of mine saying, Mom, I know when, when I'm talking to you and when you check out or when, when you're distracted. So they could be 33 and they still know <laughs> when you're in That's and good. out. But I'm really enjoying the conversation. And it looks like the chat is blowing up. So you all keep it, it, putting everything in the chat. <laughs> I'm enjoying reading all the comments. So I just wanted to let you know. But slow down for me. When I hear slow down, I think about rest. I think mm. about maybe, you know, just laying down for, for a moment. It seems like these couple of weeks have been very challenging at work with end of the year and everything. And those of you who work with budgets and stuff like that, it seems like it's just rolling in, rolling in. And so just to say, you know, turn off my computer and get off the screen and just be able to just sit that's a slow down for me, you know, just 30 right. minutes and not think about anything. So that's my uh, contribution on slowing down in that, in that respect. I love it. Well, we're going to take a moment to kind of reset the room just a little bit. We got a, a different, a lot of people joining in now. Uh, our conversation tonight is entitled slow down. And we're going to be talking about recognize, realizing the importance of listening recognizing God's hand uh, that's working in the midst of it, and then also the importance of expressing ourselves clearly on tonight. So I want to welcome everybody that's joining in. Anybody else? Right now, we're kind of talking. We're, we're, gonna, we're waiting on my son Ahmad to call in in just a little bit, but before he does, we're, gonna, we're just kind of talking about what does that mean to you slowing down. I, I hear Sheena's talking about as a mother, you know, uh, even and as a child, uh, an adult child to her mom, uh, she's talking about what that slowing down, you know, looks like. And even Faith, you know, her daughter's in the background listening. So it's not just about being single, guys. It's about just our lives in general. I think we all need to, you know, do some self-help and some self-care to ourselves so that we can be good 
something when a mate does come our way, because that's God's timing when he gets ready to do that. And we want to be the best, you know, best example, you know, of appreciation that we can, that we got ourselves together to be prepared for God's gifts. Uh, anybody else want to kind of share on that topic tonight? Slowing down. What does that mean to you, slowing down? Well, I speak on it. Um, slowing down to me is to take time so I can be fully present in the present. That's good, present Josh. moment where I am not in the rat race because I'm not a rat. All that out there doesn't mean that that's good for you. You have to understand I have to be out there, but it's kind of like we talk about, we in the world, but not of the world. And you can enjoy that within yourself. So you, you take time for thyself to again, be fully present with thyself, meaning I'm in the presence of the Lord and life has a rhythm. I get in the rhythm of the Lord and not in the rhythm that man say, this is what success looked like. This is what success, no, 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 no. I get in the rhythm of what God says success is. And I, again, can be around a lot of things, but it's not what's going on around me, it's what's happening inside of me. I quiet myself and I get into that flow, the flow that God would have for me. And we can do that. That's kind of, what I think about slowing down. It says, we always talk about slow down and smell the coffee. Well, what does that mean? Let's slow down and, and really understand this, the life, the true life and the true person you are in God, as opposed to, I go out here to try to live success in the thought the world called it. I get in God's rhythm. I get in God's will for my life. And that's, that's a different process. That's just my thoughts. I love it. I love it. Good deal. Miss Shelley, would you mind uh, going, taking us to the chat box and let's see what's going on in there? We got it, that chat box is blowing up tonight. <laughs> I was going to say the box is on fire tonight. That's good. Yes. See, I'm going to have to go back a little bit because I think uh, Katambra had said something that was really, really profound. Um, she said, oh, um, AAR means after action review of aspects of life. Mm, that's cool. Wow. I didn't know that, that, that there was an acronym for that, but okay. After action review of aspects of life. And then um, face of that's good, Katambra. Um, I think everyone was thanking Sheena for, um, for her comment about her son and, and list, the listening of, of her son. Um, and then uh, Katambra also said, reflecting, evaluating, re revising, and implementing discovery of how I got here. Is it good, bad, or worth the effort risk? Is it good, bad, or worth the effort risk, risk time or finances? You're going to have to um, talk about that. Shelly, we need to get Katambra to tell us about that after action review <laughs> of aspects of life. What is that? Right. Can you talk to us about that, Katambra? Uh, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. A little bit. So in business, and so so just just know that a lot of principles that I learned in business, I've, I've learned how to transpose those and, and use them when it comes to life as well, when it comes to um, evaluating the mindset or, or changing the mindset. Um, so an after action review in business is after you've implemented a new policy or you've done a project, you sit down with all that were involved or you sit down um, with yourself and you look at the after action. So when I, when I transfer that into real life, into my life, personally, business-wise, financially, socially, I look at, okay, what, what has occurred within this time frame? Um, and was it good? Was it bad? You know, was it worth the effort? Was it worth the risk? Did I receive some type of fulfillment? some type of peace, some type of joy, some type of reward, or did, I, did it cause some type of trauma? Did it cause some type of hardship? Did it cause some type of um, uh, un, un, unhappy feeling? Did it meet my needs or um, were there new needs discovered in this? And 
so when I sit down and look at that, I'm able to sit down. That's when I think of slowing down. That's what I think of. It's 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 to me. It's a signaling from from the spirit man saying, okay, something's off course or something's working, but you need to sit down and discover what that is. It's it's really devotional time to me because if something is working, you know, we can do something and not have a um, grasp on it, and it may be working for us, but we don't know exactly what it is what we're doing. We're just yeah. doing it because it's yeah. working for us. Yeah. Um, and so we need to take mind of what we're doing so that if we ever get into a portion or life where it's no longer working or what we're doing in that moment isn't working, we need to have some type of uh, deposit or file to say, okay, well, this was working when I was doing right. it this way. Yes, this was working. That's, right. that's right. This was making me happy. This was fulfilling me. This was worth the time. This was a good return on my um, investment, whether I'm investing love, whether I'm investing time, whether I'm investing finance, whatever it is. And so that's kind of how I use my business knowledge to um, relate it to my 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 personal life um and then you have to look at it and i apply that spiritually so i take the spiritual principles of that thing and try to apply it to that as well so did this prosper my soul did this make my heart glad did this cause a contrite spirit did this break me and if it broke yeah. me did it grow me what did i learn from that that's How good can I not do that again what put me in that position and so that's kind of when I when I think of after action review, I have to look at that because at every, not even every major turn, but at every step or stage of life, there's a time we have to be still and just hear from God. And then we also have to evaluate our mindset and what we're doing in that time. I love that. That, that kind of reminds me of mind mapping. You know, sometimes yeah. you got to go backwards to come forward. You know, right. it's just it's just like the word of God. Also, sometimes you got to go to Old Testament to understand the New Testament. And uh, in, the, in the business world, it is the same thing. You got to find out what's working, you know, uh, what what you know. And, and I think journaling or, you know, making sure that you make notes of different things. What was your process with that? Because just in case if you have to do it all over again or even listen, sometimes we have losses in life. And you got to remember that you don't throw away the whole process because you lost one part of it. Sometimes you got to find out what part worked, what part didn't, and then rebuild from that because I think everything has a root at the bottom of it. And as we go in and begin to start examining our processes, we can start life all over again. Uh, that was good, Katamra. Yeah, that was, was really good. That's Amen. real good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Well, we have Ahmad is, is here and Shelly, we're going to pick up those other uh, chats in just a little bit uh, in the in the chat box. But we do have Ahmad uh, that's here. Ahmad, uh, let's see if you can say hello and see if everybody can hear you, first of all. Can y'all hear? No. You can't. OK, Maude, try it again. It's very faint. Y'all can't hear him. Oh, goodness. All right. Try it again, Ma. Oh, man. Y'all can't hear him. All right, Ma. Let me, let me see if I need to put it on another speaker. Let's see. Okay. Can y'all hear me first of all? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Ma, try it one more time. Y'all can't hear him. I wonder how did we hear him last time? Did you have, how... is he on like his cell phone right now? Yes. How did, did you put it up to the computer speaker? Is that I how did. you did? I, I put it up to the speaker last time and he was able to, um, y'all were able to hear him. Mm -hmm. All right, I might try one more time. Just say hello. Is your speaker on, Miss Mary? Uh, yeah. Which which one, Katamba? Your audio. Your phone speaker. Your your phone speaker that he's talking on. Is it on speaker or is it on phone phone? Like earpiece. Right. Do you so have it on? It's on speaker. It I is. have it on the speaker. And the volume is all the way up. 
I'll turn it again. Mont, it just a second. Time. It sure did. It should might try one more time. They some mm -hmm. reason they can't hear you. Oh goodness, goodness, goodness. Uh let me um, wait. I just heard something. Did you hear him then? Say it again, Ma. Y'all can't hear him. I swear uh, I just heard him. Faintly, very faintly. Is his volume hear. up on his side? Ahmad, is your volume up on your end? Can, do you have a Bluetooth speaker that you can connect it to? That's what I was thinking. You know what? That, let me do that. So, Shelly, if you will, just if y'all could continue on, and I'm going to see if I can put it on Bluetooth over here. Good idea, Shelly. That was somebody in the comments. I'm just reading the comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me get it on Bluetooth over here, Ahmad. Yeah. All right. So for y'all that, that are just joining in, Miss uh, Miss Marilyn's son uh, is calling in today to be our special guest. Um, we're just having a little bit of technical diff difficulties right now getting him on the line. But um, we were talking about it's time to slow down. Um, so I want to go back to the chat real quick because we did have a few more comments that came in um, while we're getting that taken care of. Um, uh, Tamara, she said, active listening is so true. Physical acknowledgement with the way a person responds is important too. So, um, you know, just what we're, what we're talking about is just active listening and, and making sure that we're, we're, you know, Sheena was talking about her son and listening to her son and making sure she's, you know, being attentive to him. Uh, so that's where the conversation was coming from. Um, pretty much everyone was just saying, you know, good job, Sheena, for what she was doing. Uh, with her son and then Mr. Joe kind of gave her a little bit of feedback as far as men how they you know they do they do need that they need that that feedback um you know that time where you can listen um and not talk and, and women we're talkers I know I am uh we <laughs> sit around and talk 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 but sometimes it's just best to sit back and listen um I, I know tomorrow I'm hosting uh, I'm trying to host where I get together once a month I try to get my girlfriends together um, because I start to notice when they're wanting to talk, when they're, you know, they're all wanting to call me at certain times of the, the day. And I realize, OK, with all my girlfriends, they're calling me about the same things. I want to get them together in a room and just have them talk and me just sit back and listen. And so hopefully tomorrow uh, I'll be able to do that. But I try to do that every now and again because we need that outlet, especially as single parents, single moms. You know, we need to have that place where we can talk. And so, um, you know, that's that's one of the things that I'm hosting. And and for girlfriends, you know, I think the covenant marriages, they did something the other day that I was in love with. They all got together, went out to lunch and, and put it on Facebook. And that's just something, again, we need that constant, you know, to talk to each other and have that conversation and and then sit back and listen, because I learn a lot when I sit back and listen. I really do. I I, I don't. If I keep talking like right, what I'm doing now, talking to them, <laughs> I'm not learning anything. I love sitting back and hearing the heartbeats of everybody, just like Marilyn says, and just hearing what everyone else is saying. And it makes me feel like I'm not alone. I'm not by myself right. in this world. Like I'm going through the same things you're going through. And, and, and it's just, it makes me feel good. It lifts my spirits up. So um, definitely, definitely listening, active listening. And then, um, you know, just just realizing that you're not alone is is uh, is key here. Um, let, are we ready, Miss Marilyn? Did it? Let's try. Okay, Maude, see if you can say anything. I still can't hear you. You have him on the Bluetooth. I've got him on the Bluetooth on the computer. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's see. And the speaker on the computer is up. And the speaker here is up. Okay, try it one more time, Mod. Okay, all right, y'all. I'm gonna try one more thing. Um, and uh, Shell, if you can continue on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get my tower and bring it in my room, and we'll see if we can do it there. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. All right, and then let me go back to the chat. Time to reflect. So Latoya said, "Time to reflect on yourself. Self check. Reevaluate. That's good." Um, let's see. 
And then everyone's just saying yes, good, good timbre. Da, 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 da. And then Tiffany said, smell the roses and take in the fragrance. Oh, no. Uh, Faith said, smell the roses and take in the fragrance. Get in the rhythm of God and flow at his pace. Um, let me go back to Tiffany. I think I missed Tiffany. Hey, Tiffany. I miss hearing your voice, Tiffany. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Yes. Um, da, da, da. Where did you, where did you, I know I saw your comment just now. My, now my computer's acting up. <laughs> The devil is just busy. He don't want us to get blessed tonight. <laughs> we don't, we don't get blessed tonight, okay? Yes, we, we, just, gotta, we just gotta um, pray. That's, that's it. Right. That's it. That's how we, we gotta love. pray. Knock him in the head. Because yeah. when when Ahmad came in the last time, that few minutes he blessed, <laughs> our, clear. He blessed us. Yeah, he yeah. really did. Oh, so, it's all good. It yes, all I reposted. Good. Okay. You know and, what? I just wanted to. Um, I just wanted to share today, and I was going to post this on Facebook, but I didn't know how to uh, post it without it being negative. And I really, you know, really try to post positive stuff on the page, but um, was just in a few situations today, and I'm just listening to other people speak. And when you really take the time to listen to people, they tell on themselves more. That's right. Then they hide, you know, what's really right. going on. <laughs> and so I'm just overhearing a conversation. I'm waiting on uh, someone and I'm overhearing a conversation of, I'm just keep it real, of some gossipers. Mm. And I'm just listening to them talk and they're not even really paying attention that I'm there. But the point of what I learned when I needed to leave from this situation was that I was listening to the gossipers gossip about people and how much they felt like they were above the people that they were talking about. Mm -hmm. And then I listened to the people who felt like they had a right to point out stuff, you know, in other people's lives, you know, that wasn't right or needed to be fixed. And and at the end of the conversation, like everybody had something in their lives that they were not paying attention to, that they were not taking care of in their lives, but they still felt like they had a right to comment on other people's lives. And they didn't see anything wrong with their conversation. And I was just like, wow, like people don't do a heart check. Mm -hmm. and really understand like what they're saying and what they're putting out in the world it just kind of blew me away and it just kind of hit me in a in a different kind of way mm -hmm. yeah. than before and so I'm just I'm listening I, I'm grateful I was not a part of the conversation but where yeah. someone must be for the negativity to come out of their mouths like that you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> how much people are hurting yes 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 right yes yeah. i agree and so as i like see that i'm just like okay god like i know i see this or what but it usually would upset me and it's, it's not right and i'm not condoning it but i'm looking at broken people having the nerve to judge other broken people like my brokenness <laughs> is not the same as your brokenness That's yeah. right. <laughs> you know what i'm saying Yes. Oh my gosh. I yes. was just like, I, I just silently was just praying because I'm like, nobody here gets it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I catch yeah. myself all the time doing that. Like I, I'll listen to other people, you know, having conversations and I'm going and, I, and I'll know the people and I'm going, you are the same way. Yes. You, you know, you're, you're judging other people, but you are the same way. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, it brings back to that Bible scripture, you, you know, for the, who, he, who has the, um, who, he, who is without sin cast that the first stone. I'm like, I shut up because I know, yeah. you know, I tell on myself, so, you know, mm -hmm. I don't have a problem, you know, letting, I'm not, I'm not perfect. I, I'm, I'm a sinner just right. like everybody else, but I'm trying my best to do my, do my best. Now, when I see things that I'm not, that I don't approve of, I will say something. 
but it's not in a judgmental way. It's mm-hmm. more of a of an observation, like mm, yeah. I don't know about that, you know. So good, that's good, Cheryl. Just put you you sit back and listen to them gossipers. Don't get involved in that because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. not a gossiper, and but I just was like, okay, God, do I have some of that in my heart? You know, yeah. do you know, do I have that kind of judgment? Yeah. you know in my heart or I don't know what guy had me doing in that moment it just <laughs> made me start going okay am I am I like that mm-hmm. in yeah. some forms I believe we all have a little bit you know in what I'm that. Saying? yeah we and sit I'm around and have conversations yes mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. it's just if you start good going below the belt I think that's when it, it, it's, yeah. it's real bad when you when you start talking about people like just just you know, dissecting them real bad and, and just being really, really negative. That's not cool. That's not cool yeah. at all. But you got weeds in your yard, you know, your grass is up to the knee, you know, and it's <laughs> like, but you talking about somebody who yep. uh, cut their yard, but they ain't cut it right. Or I wouldn't have cut it like that. Or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they grass ain't dark enough. Yes. It's just like, okay, when the last time you even cut your grass? You know what I'm saying? Yep. You know, if you just listen to those kinds of things and it's just like, what is going on with people? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And that, like that time you need to spend, are you taking care of your health? Are are you praying? Is is the matters in your life taken care of? You know, like the Mm -hmm. things that you could be focused on, but some people will say, you know, people look at certain sins different than other sins. That's right. You know, so it's like, mm, well, I wouldn't have done that. You know, I may do X, Y, Z, but I don't do that. You know what <laughs> I mean? My house may be messy, but it ain't that messy. As right. Such, such house. That's, you know what that's, I'm saying? That's a good one. That's a good one. Right? People, yeah. and it was that kind of conversation. And it's like, but okay, if everybody's house is messy. Yes. That means your house messy. Yeah. It's messy, right? It ain't a degree of okay, right. messy is that's you know what I'm saying? Right. right. So it was that kind of conversation that I'm yes. just like, that's such a waste of words. Yes, you know it is. Cheryl, people look at seeing, you know, if you can see it, okay, mm-hmm. but it's that internal stuff that nobody can see. Amen. And, and that's yep. the, that's the junk that nobody wants to deal with, is the yes. internal stuff. And, you yes. know, everybody has a better suggestion of how to fix your life instead of mm-hmm. fixing their own. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And you say, honey, I would tell that man so-and-so. so. I, <laughs> I, would, I, could, I would do it this way. But when it comes down to their situation, they won't even take their own advice. Mm-hmm. That's exactly know? right. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I, ooh, I how, can't stand it. Mm-hmm. How we doing, Miss Marilyn? All right. Let's see. Am I? <laughs> Say it again. All right. We we need Jesus to come in here. And yeah, we're gonna get him. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Another right. thing. I'm sorry, guys. Try it that's one okay. more time. No, that's okay. Miss Marilyn, did he try calling back? Because I know sometimes with the inside phones, it's, it's an issue. Yeah, he just called right back just a minute ago. Um, uh, I'm trying to put it speaker to speaker. Okay, let's let's try this. I'm going to put it, I mean, the speaker literally on the speaker. See if you can say something. Hello? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Let it go. <laughs> so that just means this word going to be good. Come on. Yes. Yes, <laughs> oh, you go. You have to come with it today, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. all right. Well, my, um, first of all, y'all, thank you so much for being so patient tonight. We've definitely trying to get this going. We knew that it worked because we did it before a couple of weeks ago, but um, I, I have my son, Ahmad uh, Bailey on. Uh, for those of you, y'all hear me talking about him all the time. I know y'all have, <laughs> a lot of you have never met him before, but um, uh, we're talking tonight about a conversation entitled uh, Slowing Down. And, you know, I know that 
you know, just in life, all of us are going through different things. I was listening to some of the conversation that you guys were having just a few minutes ago about, you know, sometimes people judging and, you know, making all kind of comments about a lot of things. And to be honest, we all have to, you know, kind of sweep around our own door, you know, figure out what's going on with us. Uh, so one of the first things we're talking about is realizing the importance of listening, you know, having good listening skills. So, yeah. Ahmad, you want to kind of, you know, kind of open us up and kind of share with us, you know, what your thoughts are on, you know, let's kind of go to even where you are right now. Many of you know Ahmad is incarcerated right now. And probably one of the one of the biggest things that God had to do with Ahmad is bring him to a place where he would stop to listen to what was going on. Uh, Mark, can you kind of take us into that space a little bit first? Uh, this is exactly what I was thinking about. So, um, you know, one of the, one of the primary things that uh, I had to uh, learn myself was uh, how important it is and how less we all like to stop to listen and how important that is to actually listen to what people are saying and then not only listen to what they're saying, but also listen to the undertone. Of what they're mm-hmm. saying, because right. a lot of times people are people are speaking, and that what's coming out of their mouth is one thing, but what they're really intending is a whole other thing altogether. And so I had to learn uh, the art of, you know, what is it that this person is trying to say? You know, what is it? That, what message is this person trying to convey? You know, and you know, before I could even get to that point, I had to get to my own point of sitting still and listening. Before we can begin to, you know, look at the other people and say this and that is, you know, you're not doing this correct, or this is not correct, you know, we heard it many times that you have to first, you know, look within yourself and find out the things that are not, you know, you know, all together within yourself and understand the most. And so I I realized that a lot of, you know, my life's difficulties, you know, began with my inability to listen. Um, I definitely very headstrong. I felt like, you know, although I would sit there and watch you talk, I really wasn't listening. I really wasn't paying attention. I really just couldn't wait for you to stop talking, honestly. And so I felt like it was best for me not to say anything so I can get it out of the way. So I can get back to doing what I was doing, you know. But being able to get here and um, being forced, um, because, and I say forced because this is not, this was not in my own choosing, but sometimes life, life works like that. Sometimes life works where you, you know, learn your best when it's not actually of your own choosing to learn. And, you know, that's that's pretty much, you know, where I have found myself, you know, for the past 16 years. Um, but the beautiful part about it is, you know, when we look at the examples of the stories and descriptions of, of men, uh, exceptional men like uh, Moses or exceptional men like, uh, like uh, Jesus, for example, if we recall from the scripture about their lives, one of the one of the key things that they both had in common was their was their ability to get away from people and get in connection with God. You know, Moses, you know, when he was you know, when he actually, you know, even even before he took the children of Israel outside of Egypt, you know, when he had to flee for his own life, he was able to get, you know, by himself. And then even after leading them the mount in order to get away from the people to get in connection with God. Jesus is the same way. You know, and that's the thing, like, you know, because one one thing that happens when we get around people, we get to we get to hearing all these voices of people who are not in connection with God, is we begin to take on the voice of those people in ourselves and we lose that connection with God. Or that, that connection becomes a little bit more quieter. And so we have to get away sometimes in order to Basically, we ourselves. You know, Jesus, he would, you know, go up, fast, pray, meditate, whatever he felt like he had to do to recharge himself to get back to the people. And you know, that's that was a little bit of my thoughts right there. That that's good. Uh, are you are you guys hearing him pretty clear tonight? Well, no, we, he was coming in in and out, but that last yeah. part we heard perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I moved the mic a little bit, so hopefully it'll it'll uh, come in. Uh, he's he's talking about how 
that were oftentimes even biblically where uh, individuals had to get away from the crowd, like Moses and Jesus themselves had to get away so that they could hear from God, you know, that they could hear the inner sound uh, that's within them. Because a lot of times we are so uh, governed by the thoughts of others, the opinions of others. And, you know, even here we are in this singles room here tonight, uh, many of us have, you know, been you know, you know how we have little sayings about what we're going to put up with, what we're not going to put up with, what we want, what we don't want. Some of that stuff is coming from inner noises that are in. And then also it could come from experiences that we've had in times past, but it doesn't always make it real because um, how many of you can really attest that, you know, sometimes you heard it right and sometimes you didn't. That's right. You know, you know, sometimes we got the message clear and sometimes we didn't. And, and sometimes because we didn't always stop, Maude made he made a, 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 a statement about how when he was younger, about, you know, when he was hot headed and, you know, he would listen to what people were saying, but he would listen to you long enough for you to hush and for him to go on and do what he needed to do. And now that I think about it, that's exactly what he was doing. A lot of times I used to say, I used to say all the time, uh, especially with the other kids, y'all be quiet. Because Maude is over there being too quiet, and that means he's doing some other stuff over here. So he's trying to hear up and hear what I got to say so he can go on and do what he need to do. And I, I'm just making light of that, but I think sometimes that's what we do too. We It's like we hear people saying things about what they want and what they don't want, but mm -hmm. we're really busy trying to hear what we want to say. It's kind of like that lady I was telling you about a few minutes ago in the clubhouse when she said that her desire for a relationship is that she be a stay-at-home mom. But a lot of times when people are looking at an individual, maybe they're looking at your shape and are they thinking that, well, yeah. I'll change them or whatever. They're not literally hearing what you say. And then later on, you get into a relationship and it ends up being, oh, well, I know you meant that. <laughs> you know, I know that's what you meant. You know, how many of you can kind of attest to that yourselves? And then we'll continue on with the conversation with Maude. How many of you sometimes have felt that, you know, you heard, but you didn't hear because you were busy trying to hear your own, that your own, you know, your own sound? That's right. Mm -hmm. Tamara said, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, and Maude, you think... can go ahead, Joe. I think that happens sometimes too when you don't really value the other person's thought process or what they got to say. Mm -hmm. When it, you know you don't, he's like, I, you know, it's like I'm over here busy. I hear this noise over here, but I'm really not paying it any attention because what you got to say is doesn't value what I got to say. Mm -hmm. You don't have no value in your conversation because in my mind. To some degree, that says you don't you're not valuable to me. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's you know, and that's this that's a person in my opinion that's full of themselves. And mm -hmm. and, and and at times we can get a little bit beyond or we or get a little bit of knowledge and think that's it. No, it's not it. And just the tip of the iceberg, you make it the whole iceberg. And so you know, you can't tell me anything because I know it all. That's and a person good. like that, you remove yourself from their presence, never to come back. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Ma, do you have any thoughts around that? <clears throat> yeah, so uh, 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 can everyone hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Okay, so one of the things that I, uh, I deal with a lot of younger men uh, here and one of the often recurring sayings that I hear is, um, you know, you can't tell me nothing. Not saying you as in they're talking to me, but that's just a phrase I hear repeated constantly within younger men. Man, they can't mm -hmm. tell me nothing. Or you can't tell me nothing. Well, what I've what I've learned in listening to what they're saying is that they they are actually not rejecting what you have to say, or they're not actually rejecting you. What they're mm -hmm. really saying is, I'm at a place in my life. Well, I don't really trust what you have to say. I right. don't really trust what people can tell me in their life, in my life. And so because I can't trust it, I'd rather not hear it. And so right. what, that, right. what it, you know, and that's the thing, like, you know, when you have a, a active, you know, uh, when you have two people con conversating, 
you know, we're talking about listening, you know, to this inner voice and God. Like, you know, there, there are two roles that need to be played. One person listening, one person speaking. But in between that, there has to be trust with both parties. That's right. The party that has the trust that the party that's listening will accept or, or at least hear them out. And the party that's listening has the trust that the person they're listening to is going to tell them something right. And if one part of the trust chain is broken, then they're, you're not going to have a, a completely receptive message. No, you're not. Yes. That's good. No, that is real good. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's like the line of communication is broken down because yeah. there is uh, either an offense. And I want to kind of go there and talk about that. Ahmad. Sometimes there's an offense that causes us not to hear. And that can be in a lot of different ways. And I want to even kind of go into this, you know, because, you know, we're, we're seeing a lot of, a lot of singles on here. We have children, you know, and we have mates and different things like that. Mm -hmm. Anytime that there is, is a literal offense in there, sometimes it'll stop a person from hearing. It's not that you're not speaking truth. It's not speaking. It's not saying that you don't have any value. It's just that we got a little bit of, of something in there that's causing there to be kind of a, a deficit on the other side. Uh, Ma, can you kind of speak on that a little bit? Yeah, so, you know, what, especially dealing with children. So, um, you know, and I can speak on the aspect of, you know, being a, a young a young boy, you know, watching a young boy watching a single mother grow, you know, the thing about it when the, when the father is not around is that, you know, although although the young boy may not know why the father wasn't around, he doesn't. That, that doesn't really matter. All that he knows is that the father wasn't there. And so, especially if the mother, you know, the mother has struggled being single. All he knows, and it could have been the mother's fault for any reason. You know, who knows whose father was? The child doesn't matter. All he knows is that he watched his mother struggle growing up. You weren't there, and now here you come around. You know. 18 years later, 20 years later, and, you know, there finally may be a space within the mother where she's ready to let you in to speak to the child, and the child doesn't want to hear you, right. not because the child is saying that you were wrong, but that the child is defending, or the child is actually offended, like speaking on the offender, the child is actually offended that you would come in now after having watched his mother grow up with him and struggle as a single parent, and that's difficult. How how does the father now get the message across that he can be trusted with a young boy who has now developed a distrust for him, even though the situation may not have been his fault, or it may have been his fault. You know, so and those are situations where at that point, you know, as single mothers, um, it's important that you know you do your part um, with your children as far as communication. Yeah. Communicating to the child why 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 the other parent may not be there. You may be single father. Communicating to the child, you know, what's going on with the mother, what's the position that you're taking, why things are the way they are, and not just assuming that, you know, because you are the parent that whatever decision that you're making in your life doesn't matter to him because he's not gonna be affected or he won't feel this or she won't feel this. You know, so communication, you know, with the child is, is important. So that, you know, let's say, you know, you as a, a single mother or you as a single father may have something in your heart for that other parent who's not there. But then later on in your life, you accept God into your life, right? So, and then, but you have, you know, lived, you know, with this hardness toward that other person and hasn't, and haven't allowed space for that person to come in and share time with the child. But now that you have accepted God and you've softened up your heart, you've done damage to the child. Mm. You see? That's good, Mom. And so you have mm. to go back and rectify that. Yes. Yes. That's good. Can any of you relate to what he's saying? Mm -hmm. Single? Yeah. I <laughs> the timbre? Just being transparent as can you hear me? Yeah, yeah it's it's coming. It's kind of coming in. It's kind of coming in and out. But we definitely want to hear what you're saying, Katamra. Um, I can totally understand what he's saying. Um, being transparent as a single mother, as a young single mother, raising my daughter. Um, just the the the, the contrast between who my who my daughter got as a mother versus who my father my son has as a mother are two very different paths. And so the relationship that 
me and my daughter have right now is a little bit estranged because she got the mother that was young, um, irresponsible, you know, and didn't make the best decisions. And so when she got to a certain age where she could see that the actions that I was making wasn't um, the action or words that I was speaking to her, she started making her own decisions. And, and be it so that they might not been the best decisions, I no longer had a safe space in her mind or in her heart, because like you said, she had taken offense to speak wisdom into her because there's that offense in the way, but then there's also those actions that she saw that said to her, you, you talking something, but you don't know what you're talking about. And so mm. as, as, as an adult, we have, we have had communication where we, we talk vividly and openly about that. And I have to take the ownership, even though the words or the things that she says to me may be painful, I have to own that because in that space, that's who I was to her. And so when I try to speak wisdom or knowledge into her now, it's mama, 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 mama. Okay, 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 okay. You know, there's that offense, <laughs> but then she'll also turn around and say, okay, I heard you, but I just wasn't trying to hear it in that moment. And so that I, I, mean, I can relate to that very much so. And so you, as, as that single mother and as me being who I was in that moment and who I am now, it, it does me no good to say, well, you just don't listen or you don't understand. It's, it's, I understand what you're saying and I'm sorry that that's what I showed you. I'm sorry that's what you received, but that was never my intention to hurt you. Although it was hurting me and early hurting you, that was never my intention. And so I can very much understand what he's saying when it comes to that. Yeah. You know, Katamra, I can too, because a lot of times I think what we're trying to do as parents, you know, we try to listen, we're trying to balance all these balls all around. And it's like, <laughs> you know, that's just another something I got to I got to try to take care of and have that kind of conversation. But like mine is saying to that child, that was something that was very important because it can leave them very confused and very offended, not only with one parent, but it can leave them offended with both parents in there. So it is a place where we have to sit down and have those types of conversations and be open and real about it, you know, That's because, right. you know, m most of us on this call are women uh, that are single parents and we got kids that we may be having some problems with or have had problems with. And especially on the on the line of communication, you know, because something was not explained properly. And it can happen with married couples as well. You know, maybe the child doesn't understand what's going on. And, you know, you guys went through separation and divorce. That's one of the worst things that can happen with a child because a child just does not understand that kind of stuff. And if we don't sit down and explain it to them, it can leave them in a world where they start trying to take matters into their own hand because right. one, it could be the lifestyle that they have been used to living. And now all of a sudden we can't live this same lifestyle. I don't understand why we can't live this lifestyle. I see mama over there crying. I see mama over there sad. Mama's not giving attention to the house. So now I got to go and finish the rest of my life with some people that may not even understand my story. And they start taking me into a place where nothing but confusion is coming in. And so now I'm confused. I'm, I, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I need to do. I don't know if I need to talk to mama. And mama, mama may say, don't talk to daddy. All That's those right. kinds of things. So it's it's all kind of scenarios that, that can wrap around that equation. You know, mm -hmm. Maude, you want to, we got a couple of minutes and then he's going to hang up and call back again. Maude, you have any words uh, right before you uh, hang up uh, just a minute here? On that particular topic, no, it was, no, it, it was good just listening. Amen, amen. <laughs> yes. Well, we're gonna dialogue around it, Amad. We're gonna let you hang up and uh, give us a call right back. But we're gonna dialogue around that because I know the ladies got some stuff to say. <laughs> 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 All right, we'll catch up with you in just a minute. All right, All right bye bye. All right. I definitely, All right, ladies. I definitely love what uh, what Katamba was saying about the that dynamic, my, you know, with with her daughter and her son. Um, mama, mama was two different, two different people. I know for me, my daughter, I had her when I was 26. I was still in them streets, still partying, still want to hang out, not want to read my Bible. Didn't want to go to church because I grew up in and out that church. I definitely did not want to do that. Uh, you know, so my life was just, um, different than, uh, a 36 year old mom having my son. 
at 36, um, where I was in the church, in the Bible, in, in, you know, two different moms, two different relationships. And I think it built my relationship with my daughter so much better um, because she trusts me. Um, and I, and, and, and the way, the reason why I say she trusts me because she saw mommy through some of the most craziest times of my life. And, and she saw mommy crawl her way up out of it mm -hmm. with the help of God. So right. she knows if anything ever were to happen, mommy, mommy know how to fix this. Mommy, yeah, mommy man. will take care of it. So I know she trusts me, even though back then it didn't look like um, you know, she could trust me. She would go to grandma all the time because mommy was not well. Mommy was not well at all. I was not doing the right thing. Uh, I made bad decisions. I used to leave her with my mom for weeks, you know, wow. because I wanted to have fun. I did not plan on having a kid at all. I hated kids. I didn't want kids. And <laughs> so that's why they're eight years apart now, <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, so I definitely agree with that. that you're, you're, you know, and so our relationship is just completely, she trusts me, we talk more, whereas my son, he just takes, he takes me for granted, I think, sometimes, because he knows, oh, mommy, mommy's good, I ain't got to worry about mommy, she go to church, she, she, do, you know, <laughs> there's no drama, there's no drama, he don't, he don't see mommy going through anything other than, you know, uh, you know, turn the lights off, or go to bed, you know, it's, so he he's he's cool, but just to see the dynamic between me and her is so it's so different. We're like friends. Like she saw me growing up. She saw me coming from a different place into a different place into a different place. So I, I totally agree with Tamara on that one. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mrs. Marie's got a hand up, but but before we go to Marie, Shelly, can you go to the chat box and see what's going on in there? I know it's lighting up in there. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Let me back here. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so when I said the audio was coming out, so Tamara said I could hear everything he said, but it did get low, um, but still was able to hear the examples of the one in the Bible, like Jesus and Moses and others had to get away to hear from God. I agree, completely agree. I love when, when Ahmad did bring that up because, it, that, you know, God shows us all these examples of how we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to do. And if we miss that, you know, because how many times have we read these scriptures where Moses and, and Jesus went on <laughs> the Garden of Gethsemane and stuff? Those are his moments to be quiet, to shut up, to listen, yes. to hear yes. what, what God is saying. And and I take, you know, for, as for me, I take that for granted because I didn't even look at it like that. So mine just really brought something out of me. I'm going to have to go back to the Bible and see how many times <laughs> everybody took a break. We didn't take a break. Yeah. You know? That's right. I'm just yeah. saying. So, I'm just saying. Yeah, um, and then Katamara said, absolutely. Uh, Tamara agreed. Uh, she's been there. Um, that's it, Mr. Joe. It's disrespectful from uh, Miss Chick. Uh, I think I missed it because I had to walk away. So I don't know what that was about, Mr. Joe. Um, and hearing someone and listening to someone are two different things. Miss Kathy mm. said that. Absolutely. Because I can sit here and nod like this. <laughs> what you talking about just yeah. be like uh-huh yeah uh -huh. yeah you have no clue so it's right. two different things and the, and yeah. the way to check somebody if they are listening to you is ask them a question ask them a question yeah, yeah that's exactly right <laughs> just, yes just randomly just say you understand what i'm yeah. saying <laughs> all yeah. right um latoya said toxic <laughs> um and then katamara said especially as an adolescent um mm. i'm not sure where that came from again uh, da, 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 your appreciation of the person talking or self thought is so true. All right, and then I guess we were having some here. Da, 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 da. That's good. Trusting. It says you've shown me you're untrustworthy, so you cannot speak to me, my situation, mm. or in my life. Oh, I yeah. love that example. Mm. Yes. That's big. Tonight she has been lighting it up. Tonight. Um, Felicia said, yes, communication is very important. It is very important. And then Tiffany said, I'm going to have to explain to my kids when they're old enough to understand. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, mm -hmm. I wonder when that, is. you know, let's go back to the child life, you know, what Ahmad is talking about. Ahmad, yeah. how old do you think a child is as a young man 
to understand some of the things that you just talked about, understand the dynamics of what's going on between mommy, daddy, all that kind of stuff, trouble, single parents. And how does a child, when they start understanding those things? Uh, I'm just a part of the younger world there. Uh, you know, I don't say like, you know, being a parent, you know, just assume that, you know, you're looking toward, you're looking more yeah. toward teenage ideas, right? So to begin those types of uh, But I would probably begin having these types of conversations, maybe not as in depth around eight. Yeah, I was just mm-hmm. gonna say the same thing. Right. Yeah. I already started to like, you know, these topics. Because at, at about that age, they're paying attention. They may not yeah. be able to articulate <laughs> yeah. what they see, but they see. They yeah. notice. They know. They just don't know what, but they know something. Mm. You know. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and Ahmad, one thing, like, what what happens when, you know, like with every family, it's with every family, there's always one child that's closer to their mother or to their father than anything. And when you're close to your parents and you feel their pain, what yeah. what is that like when, you know, parents don't think that the kids understand anything, but that child is so close to you that they can literally feel your pain of what you're going through? Can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Okay, so I would probably say I, I qualify uh, in that. So mm-hmm. the reason being is that, uh, well, number one, I'm a parent. So that, you know, everybody knows that we're very uh, uh, in tune, you know, uh, emotionally or intuitively. Uh, so, you know, what I've learned about myself is that's one of the natural qualities of me. But also, not really, you know, having that uh, male figure uh, in my life uh, as opposed to my, you know, my brother or my sister, especially my sister, you know, it made me gravitate towards, you know, the only parent I had, which was my mother. So the things that mm-hmm. I witnessed, you know, her going through affected me, and I was actually able to uh, pick up on a lot of things that she may have been dealing with, uh, even though she may not have known that I knew, like times of struggle or uh, times of heartbreak or, you know, just uh, times of unsurety, uh, confusion, you know, you pick up on these things when you're, when you're close. And what it does is for a young, for a young boy is it pushes you to a point where you're trying to look for solutions. You know, you, you begin because as, you know, I've always felt that as, as, as men, you know, we're not the only leaders in the in, in the dynamic, male female dynamic, but it is, I feel like it, it, it is you know a part of us that is you know more natural, and so we look we're problem solvers. Even as young, even as, I remember, I can tell you so I remember. Uh, well, hold, I hold, hold, hold that thought, mind, Mon, right. Mon, Hold that thought right quick. Can you guys hear him? He's going it. in and out a little bit. Are you are you holding the phone up to the computer? Is that how you're doing it? No, it's still sitting down where it was before. Okay. Yeah, just kind of, I guess when you, I can see when you're leaning it towards it, we can hear them no, very good. I wasn't, okay. All right, let's, let, I'm trying to move the mic around. Okay, right. let's see if you can try it again, Ma. And y'all, if you would, okay. keep typing in the box to make sure you, I can hear, y'all can hear guys. Okay, okay. go ahead, Ma, I'm sorry. Okay, can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. They said good, okay. Okay. So I was just going to tell a story that I remembered. Uh, when we're talking about, you know, what age the children understand, you know, what age I understand. So I remember uh, my mom was dating this guy. I, I don't know, you know, this was many, many years ago. I was maybe about eight years old, maybe seven. I don't, I don't remember. I think I was about seven. Um, and you know, this guy must have made, you know, these threatening remarks to my mom. And me and my brother, my brother and I, you know, we had just gotten these BB guns for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, we, here we are, you know, I'm seven, maybe eight, he, he's like 11, maybe 12, and he and I are standing uh, outside of our door, our house door, uh, with these BB guns in our hands, going <laughs> shoot who the be put up. <laughs> and I'm not playing. This is a real story. This is a story. And, yeah. and, and those are the types of things that I mean, like, you know, when you're dealing with your young sons or your young daughters, you know, uh, a lot of times, 
they are understanding what's going on, although things may not be, you know, communicated to them. And so because they are so young and they don't have the mind to uh, reasonably or rationally, you know, think these things through, they'll try to figure it out themselves, the solution That's themselves. Right. And it'll be yeah. way they won't have a clue as to, you know, what should be done, but they'll just think of something to do. And sometimes right. it, sometimes it can turn out good, and a lot of times it can turn out, you know, self-destructive. Um, so, yeah, those are, those are a little bit of my thoughts on that. Yeah, and that's why they didn't get no more BB guns no more. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember when I took them BB guns away. I didn't know why I took away from them, but I took them BB guns away from them boys. <laughs> oh, man. That's man. good. That's but good. Like, Anybody yeah. else? Go ahead, Joe. No, I would say he, y'all were going to shoot the shout out of that guy, wasn't you? <laughs> man that's something though but uh, you know and that's that's you know that's the way young boys operate and i can even go back to my childhood when it comes to my mom and you know we talked on some previous shows and you said in Maryland, you figured out why i'm so close and concerned about the women and and, right. and that is that, and I was that. I was the, I was the boy with the BB gun, but I I would you know it's it's amazing you're around you listen, but you know you don't supposed to talk much, but you know you listen, and later all of that comes back around. But you are protective of your mom. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I was a kid, and I got word that my father had passed away. And these guys come to the house and they had to let us know. And I'm like, who are these guys? And they, you know, my mom outside and she started to cry. So I'm sitting back in the, I'm watching like a hawk watch a chicken. Like, you know, and I step out, you know, and I'm, I'm not big as a toothpick, but I had a little attitude. Cause I'm wondering, you know, why you got why y'all here got my mom crying like that? You know, and 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 I remember her said, Harold, it's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. I said, we're gonna be all right, we. But anyway, I say all that to say, young boys will protect their mom. So I see what you mean about that. So I just wanted to say that. That's good. And I, th I think moms have to also uh, take into consideration when they are raising boys mm -hmm. that there are, um, you know, you know, you're 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 modeling things before the boys, you yeah. know, uh, having to be very, very mindful uh, that they will. And listen, it, it can be their daddy. And if yeah. that child is close to their mama, That's them right. kids will come up against that daddy, too, if you try to hurt their mama. Oh, ain't no doubt. And so there's a there's a place that there's a male testosterone that comes out. And sometimes I think you gotta let them duke it out. Yeah. Mod, what Joe Mod and Joe, what would you say? Because they boys. Hey, we don't think yeah. like us. We real sensitive. Don't y'all be over there fighting yeah, and doing well, that? You know. But they over there trying to fight for their Joe and, and Mod, what do y'all think about that? Well, you know, if it's me and my brother want to hit him low and the other hit him high, we're going to take you out of here sometime, right? That's what, <laughs> what you think I'm hard about that. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it, 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 yeah, I think we have to let the boys, you know, and, you know, the men establish their means of communication in a healthy way, you know. And sometimes, yeah. you know, it might get a little... You know, it might get a little rough, but, you know, as as women, as, uh, you know, single mothers raising boys, you know, you always seek to, you know, protect him. Right? You, yeah. want to, you don't want to put him in harm's way. You don't want him to do this. But, you know, remember that you're training up a young boy to be a man to take on the world. That's right. So it's his mission to take on the world, but you won't let him take on, you know, this little small act by himself. What are you? You know, what's, what's the message that we're really teaching the young boy? You know, and so I feel like in that message, what we're sending them is that, you know, always look to me. 
You know, if there's a problem, I'll get you. If there's a problem, and that's not always the case. When he goes out into the world and takes on the world, my mother won't be there. Right. He needs to learn from a young age to be able to handle small situations, right. you know, by himself so that he can grow strong in his mental yeah. capability. And yeah. Amar, let me ask a question. Do you think, I, I was listening to you earlier about the young man that you tried to talk to him sometime and they kind of pushed that away. Do you think they uh, come from a place of fear? Because really there's only two emotions, there's fear and love. So do you think that, that they shun by not getting close because they operate in a place of fear? Do you think that? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And most times like, you know, by the time that by the time young men are here, they've already, you know, shunned, you know, countless numbers of other men. They've already been have seen messages uh of rejection of men. And so by the time I see them here, you know, I understand, you know, what's going on in that in that young man's life. You know, he you know, it's just like with women. Women who Women who have not had good relationships with their mothers will usually mm -hmm. tend to be other women. That's right. And that's right. That's right. And, and, and men who didn't have disrespect other men. And yeah. they'll lean more toward women. That's just how that goes. And I understand that. So when I see that, and I know that that fear, that fear is really coming from a place of, of, of hurt. You know? Yes, you know, that's so right. that's the first emotion. The first emotion is not anger or, you know, fear is hurt. You know, yeah. this hurt, this hurt me that my son is wrong. Now I am, you know, angered and I'm fearful of being hurt again. So I don't want to let a man close to me, you know, to be able to have the potential to do that again. Right, right. That's good. Y'all, y'all, I remember uh, one time, and, and I had to really put these things in action. I remember uh, one time Ahmad and Demarcus, had, <laughs> well, I don't know if you remember this or not, one time Ahmad and Demarcus had gotten, <laughs> had gotten into it. And uh, they, those boys were like day and night. You know, Ahmad was the one that cleaned up all the time, but he and Marcus always shared a room together. And so Maude was always the one that wanted to keep the room clean. And Mark was always the one that wanted to keep the room dirty. He just wasn't going to clean up for nothing. <laughs> and so Maude got fed up with DeMarcus one last time. Maude, you, you know what I'm going to talk about. Maude, listen, Maude went upstairs. He got all the DeMarcus clothes and put them in a trash bag. <laughs> all the stuff that Ahmad did, DeMarcus didn't put up. He put them in a trash bag and dropped them down at the bottom of the stairway. <laughs> <laughs> he dropped them. He dropped them at the bottom of the stairway. So Demarcus comes in. <laughs> Demarcus comes in, and Mark said, "You think you bad? You think you bad?" He said, "You think because you've been to jail, you bad?" <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ma, do you remember that? He, and yeah, so, I remember. I remember that. And Ma said, he said, I'm going to catch you out in that street. <laughs> he said, I better not see you out there in that street. <laughs> so, y'all, I knew right then, I knew they weren't going to hurt each other, but I knew they were boys. And I said, you know what? They about to worry about that on their own because I can't go chasing them behind them with everything. I think that's I think that's what he's trying to say. You got to let them get to that particular place because that's just a that's just how men do. And one thing I've learned about men too: men make up faster than women do. Women hold grudges a long time. Men they go fight it out, duke it out, come on right back up against they've been, and they may not trust you like they did before. But we done set some grounds here to where ain't no fear in this particular place, or I'm not afraid of you with anything. So, um, yeah, um, I want to kind of get to the chat box. Katamra uh, said fear and an illusion of protection of self. Same for mm -hmm. women. Uh, that have uh, walked that path. That's good. That's good. Ma, do you want to kind of talk about that a little bit? Fear and illusion? Uh, that uh, Fear and an illusion of protection of self. Yeah. Well, definitely. That's, that's, it's definitely a, um, it's, it's, it's something that we as human beings, we learn to, uh, to protect ourselves, you know, 
away from that type of hurt. And so, you know, we take on this, you know, this this so called fear or the you know illusion of of, of of protection. And, you know, we develop it as a just a, a, a piece of armor. But it is it, it's it's really not healthy because you're not actually addressing, you know, what the problem is. And the the problem is that, you know, whatever it whatever that it was that hurt you or whatever that it was that caused you to react like this you didn't healthily address that problem. And, you know, sometimes sometimes you can go a long time when the problem has occurred, and when that happens, you can't go back to address that particular problem. And so you, you learn to address these things with God. You take these things in with God, and you, and you leave it there. You know, until, you know, you may want to talk to this person again later on in life, and you can address it in real time. But until that time, you know, you don't want to walk through this, through this world with any type of fear, because that's just not how God works. And that's if right. we're saying that God <clears throat> put us here as representatives of himself here on earth, then we have to move like he would move without fear. Yeah. So whatever it is that we need to do, especially if the solution is taking it to God, then that's what, and we leave it there. And then yeah. we walk around, you know, with it, we, we, we regain our confidence, regain our trust, we let the hurt go, we let the fear go. You know, it's not to say that you will, you know, move with just absolute uh, certainty, but your certainty will be based on your relationship with God. Yeah. And that's that right. You so, yeah. That's good. That, that's good. That, that, kind of, that kind of leads us to our next conversation is recognizing God's hands in right. a thing, you know, and, and that's exactly what Ahmad just said. Sometimes you got to let, let it go. And address these things before God until he can give you the strength or he can build you up and, you know, rebuild you. And then you can revisit that thing at another time. You know, Ma, do you want to kind of hit on that a little bit, recognizing God's hand in the midst of things? Oh, yeah. So, you know, one of the things that I have, uh, you know, dealt with, you know, I speak about young boys. And when I speak about young boys, I speak about, you know, most time I'm looking at myself and my relationship with my father, which was pretty much non-existent. You know, and I gave up that example of how the father may try to come back into the child's life, but by that time, the child is already, you know, hard himself against that type of presence. And that was me. You know, by the time he actually tried to reach out to me, and I remember the day that he did it, it caught me by such surprise that I was actually offended that he would even try to, I think I was about 18 years old, and he just called me on my cell phone one day. And the first thing I know, I was about 20. I was about 20 years old. And he called me on my cell phone. And the first thing I asked him, how did you get this number? You know, and he said that he got it from my mother. You know, but after that, you know, I just completely hung up on him and didn't talk to him again. You know, probably it was probably another 10 years, you know. And so, you know, by the time that I was mature enough to get to that situation and say, this is something I need to deal with. Um, I had to take it before God myself. That's you right. Know, before, uh, explain, you know, myself as far as, you know, the things that I had went through uh, as a child, growing, growing up as a male, uh, why I had rejected him so much. And when I didn't receive a response, I wasn't even offended by it. Because by that time, I had already taken it before God. And I realized, okay, that's just, it's just not the time or the season Right. for that to happen. Right. And I'm confident in that because I've already taken it to God first and foremost before I even reached out to him. And so That's now, right. you know, I've gotten to a place where I can, you know, talk with other men in a healthy way and not talk to other men and see him. Right? Mm -hmm. And see right. him and be ready to, you know, lash out at, you know, one thing I used to always do is I would lash out at men here who weren't present in their child's life. You know, and then try to take on a role now that you're here, try to be present in your child's life as if you had always trying to be a father when you were in the world. And it didn't make sense to me. And I would always tell them, but I wouldn't tell it to them in love. I was telling it to them out of a place of hurt and anger of being right. that child out there. And That's I would right. tell them, you know, how is it that you can say that you're trying to be a daddy now that you, you know, sitting here and you got time to do this and that. But when you were out there with them, you didn't have nothing to do with them. That doesn't even make sense. Right, and uh, you know what I had to realize I had to stop doing that for my yeah. own, for my own sake, and for the sake that I have, you know, with my relationship with God, 
you know, and so, and it had to start with me taking that, me taking the uh, step to rectify the relationship with me and my own father, because that's where that came from. Mm-hmm. So, that's right. Yeah, that's those are my... That's good, Mon. Have any of yeah. you guys noticed any of those things taking place maybe with your children's lives or even, I mean, anything similar? Is any of this resonating with you guys? Mm-hmm. I'm taking your deck. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. my son my son doesn't have a relationship with his dad like he should. And, um, you know, his dad has been reaching out lately wanting to um, have him come down for the summer. And my son doesn't want to do it. And I don't know how to tell his dad. He just doesn't want to do it because he doesn't know him. You know, That's right. he's, he just doesn't know him. And, and what he does know of him is he's in and out of his mm-hmm. life. Um, he knows that there was an unhealthy, we, we, we had an unhealthy relationship. And so mm-hmm. he just, he's afraid. And, yeah. and when I, when I mentioned that to him one time and I said, well, he just, he's just nervous. He don't know you. Well, That's I right. got to get to know him. And he's so aggressive on the phone. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. my son's not used to, to, to aggressiveness, even though I know he mm-hmm. needs to have his dad in his life. He, he clearly, you know, from hearing you guys tonight, it's a, it's a, it's a necessity, but how do you, how do you, how do you put your son in, 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 in the hands of somebody no, that you no. know is abusive, right. that you know is no. uh, hot tempered, um, no. you know, and mm-hmm. my son is just not that kid. And so no. that's where I am at right now. So that this is good conversation. I know I'm not the only single parent in mm-hmm. here that has a, a, a bad relationship or, you know, a, a, the, the father might not be a good role model for the child. And so, you know, it's just, it's really hard. It's hard. And I know I have to make that decision as a mom for him to build that relationship because it is needed. But my question is, how do you do that when you know that other person is just not, not a good not a safe person for your child to be around. No. You know what? I know I know we're gonna move we're gonna move to uh Tamara and Joe just a minute. Um uh, I, this this Shelly is making me think about something as singles uh trying to go into new relationships and you got boys and the boys are dealing with that illness from their fathers and then you think that they're gonna go into a relationship and have a relationship with that man. It ain't the, that's, it not ain't, that's not gonna happen because mm-hmm. they're already offended and it's right. like we have not taken the first steps to correct whatever need to be done and it's kind of like mm-hmm. Maude said I'm going to always be looking at men like that because I'm really trying to get this I got to get this first relationship right. straight right. before I can start trying to take on this new relationship with somebody else mm-hmm. Yeah, Mr. Joe and then we'll go to Tamara well uh, you know I was listening to Shelly and my thoughts on that is this. First of all, if he's showing that much anger on the phone because he can't get his way, can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine your son dealing with something like that every day? The problem with him, and I'm not judging, my thing is it's kind of like this. He has not healed himself. Until he can heal himself, he don't even know how to talk to his son because you have right. father that said, well, he need to call me. Call you for what? That's right. He don't That's know right. you. That's right. He don't know you from Adam's house cat. He do not know you. So what he needs to do, if he's really serious, this is just my thought. He needs to come to where you all are. Spend some time there. That's right. Monitor. Monitor. And see, <laughs> if he really wants to build something, he got to make the effort. You don't send him that wherever he at. No. No, he come here I to where you are. That, and, is, and, my, that if is my that is exactly really important. If it's really important, he'll uh, come and then that's start exactly from what there. I said. And he had me looking like I was crazy. I was like, you guys, your family need to come to him. You know, we'll set up, you know, for you guys to come yeah. visit him. But he's just not ready. He's nine. He's just he has does not know who you are. So there's no, no. relationship at all. So. Like I said, how are you going to send you, Mr. Joe? My you going to send him to an unhealed person? No, we're not going there. No. he, he Again, I don't want to sign repetition. I'm going to leave this alone. But he has a new your heart. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't like that. Because <laughs> you don't. No, we don't 
don't do it like that. If he really wants, and I know I'm repeating myself, if he really wants this to happen, he needs to come there and he needs to be on his best behavior or whatever to build something. You can't build something and, and your son feel that intensity coming from you that, uh-uh, that would not work. So, no, I think where you are, he needs to try to build that with the son on, on, on you all's turf, not on his turf. And I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> Amen. Ms. Tamara? Yes, this is so good. Um, but I'm definitely relating because of my son. And then the uh, father, well, not my, my father, but uh, the ex-husband. But when, when it comes down to my son at a young age, he wanted to fight his dad because he had seen things. And I mean, this is why we were still married, yeah. but it was in and out, but he wanted to fight him. But I said, no, you know, push him, you know, don't, you know, I got this, <laughs> didn't really have it, but God had it. But the thing is that as he got older and he was playing sports, and so he'll, you know, now, now we're apart. Now, I mean, he was, he, he was playing ball, playing ball, football, basketball. And so, but when it came down to his high school years, by the time we were divorced, when he was a junior, sophomore going into be a junior in high school, he really had to shut his daddy off. He was ready to fight him every time he, and it was just very, hard place for him to be there, but his dad would come to the games, but he would not have nothing to say to him. And so, but then his dad wasn't even coming around to see him or his sister, Tamara. And so when it came down to over the time frame over the years of even him going, you know, going to college and he would just show up for the football games, the dad, still not really saying much to him. He would make sure he would be gone. And so now he's, now he's so it's 34. Yeah. But and he recently had his dad to show up, come visit him. He lives in Utah with his kids and stuff. And it was kind of hard, but my daughter was went with them, went with him because he wanted to go up there. Now all this time they're not talking. But the last time I was up there, there was a big thing. I ended up having to talk to Marilyn when I came back because I was up there in January when, when I went up there. But the thing was that there was so much buildup from the time that, because my son ended up re recalling, now, there was a big explosion between the, the son, between my son and the dad on the last day of us being there. And my son recalled, now after, just telling me, in my, in the mayor, that I still remember when, dad had you down on the floor and he had his hands around your neck and I'm like what you remember that because he was number maybe I'm, I'm thinking he was in elementary but he was sixth grade and but I'm like what you know but let's think about all those years of him he still remembered a trauma mm -hmm. but yet when he confronted his dad when they were having that that conversation his dad said, I don't understand why you're so mad. He says, he said, we didn't have any trauma. He, he did. He said, and that, and that caused my son to throw the chair against the wall. So he kind of just out, he just blew up. So there was things that he went to counseling for. He been going to getting his own counseling over the years before he saw his dad. So he was building up. He was going to God like, Amar <laughs> said he was doing that, putting God in, you know, but he still, his dad by him denying that he wasn't there for him, because he said, you abandoned me. That's what he told him. He said, you abandoned me as a father. And so those things, if until the father admits it, the son can, he really, he, for, you, he forgives, but when that man comes in your face, <laughs> And tells you I can't, and nothing happened. It's start time to start. He could. There's a even right now to even to the point he forgave. They, you know, they kind of slowly talking again. It's still not there because of that denial of the hurt 
So I'm just shared that, but, but you know, my son's still getting his counseling <laughs> and he's growing, but I just shared that, but yeah, God is definitely in it. You're on mute, Miss Marilyn. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, that just, that was good, Tamara. Um, it lets us know that, you know, ladies, we got to really put our focus in the right place because I tell you, if I had to do all over again, uh, many of the places that I felt myself trying to be in a hurry with, trying to do this, trying to do that, I would have slowed down and paid attention to the things that really mattered, you know, like, you know, like, you know, you got these children in your hand. It, it kind of reminded me again of that lady in the club. I think that's why I, I agreed with her. She wanted to be a stay at home mom so that's that right. she could nurture these kids and, you know, make sure she's, you know, ushering them in the right direction and not so much, you know, wanting the child to be just up under all the time, but giving them the proper nourishment that they need. Uh, because how many of us can admit that we got children right now that, you know, that are of adult age? Uh, that are needing to go through therapy. That's right. Because of things that we're not taking care of in early time. Mm -hmm. And not only just the kids, us too. Some of us are having to go through therapy, you know, to mm -hmm. try to get some things right in our lives. You know, yes. anybody have anything that they want to share even with? I know a lot. We got a lot of callers on here. Any of y'all that haven't spoken just yet? What's, what's on your heart? What's on your mind tonight? Ooh, Miss Marilyn, this is Tamika. Uh, when yes, my, yes. I was young when my uh, kid's father went to prison. Um, he went to prison for 15 years and uh, my girls were um, two, no, one and two when he went to prison. So therefore I had to raise them all by myself. But when I met my husband, um, I'm, I was 26 years old when I met Curtis. So therefore he, they were six and seven maybe when they met him and my baby girl was one so he practically raised them so when Terrence mm -hmm. got out a couple of years ago um I guess Tiara was still in high school and Tamisha was graduating out of high school they used to be so upset and so um but I, I, I mean, when they were young, I never did really talk um, that much about their dad. I wanted them to build their own relationship with him when he got out. I didn't want to tell him nothing bad about him or, you know, anything or to taunt at the relationship that they had when they were going to see him in prison. And um, but when he got out, that's when the real life story began. The Tiara is uh, 28 years old now and she has nothing to do with her dad nothing absolutely and she has my grandson and she uh, she told me she said mama if my daddy didn't take care of me or didn't have enough sense to stay out of prison when I was young I don't want him to be around my my son showing him those type of things and I said Tiara look like to me you need to have a relationship with your dad y'all need to have a talk when she tried to have a talk with her dad I don't know if it was so much anger inside Tiara that she was so competitive. She wanted to fight him. She was just angry. And so I was like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. But here lately, um, Tiara told me, she said, Mama, I, I just don't know about him. I don't know what to do. So I began to pray. And when mm -hmm. I started doing my seeds, uh, uh, I do seeds like uh, for obedience and for my children and uh, stuff like that. And when I pray at night, I pray for their relationship to be stronger. My oldest daughter kind of put things to the side. She uh, she doesn't really kind of harbor on it. And she's kind of just say what she's going to say and she be done with it. But I don't want them to have this resentment towards him. You know what I'm saying? Because he's already not being the pen. He done done all he can do. And no, he could have, when he got out, he could have done things better for them. But I do understand what Ahmad said when he was saying that when these fathers come back in these kids' life and they remember things. My daughter remembers all kinds of things. All she tells me is she's remembering when I was young. And she, I had to raise them by, by myself. I struggled. And I did the best that I can. She said, I don't want that for my, my son. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't want them to grow up like that. I never 
want that for my son. And she said, and for you to have to do that, I don't want to be that lady where I have to grow up and, and my son grows up and not has to have his dad. But I wish and pray that Tiara and her dad would have some type of relationship so she can get some type of healing because she doesn't have any healing. She don't rest about it. She cries about it all the time. So it's emotional disturb when these kids are not with their family. But most of all, it's important that as parents that we don't downgrade the father or the other parent right. when right. the children are trying to heal in that process because that's not doing anything it's not it's not making it any better uh and and um and to be negative with it uh would cause them to not even deal with them period and and once she said one day that mama i'll go to his funeral and 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 that's it and i felt bad that she i even apologized that our relationship didn't work well she could have their relationship or that maybe we would have stayed together it would have been better but God has his plans what he has for people in our lives and I think the best thing for when he went to the pen that was to keep him alive because he was heading down the wrong road the wrong road we didn't know that when we were young but that's how it does and I just I pray that everybody who has a child that you always be positive no matter what around them and let them build their own understanding and mindset about their own parent mm-hmm. that's how I feel about it that's good. That's good. That's good. That's real good. Yeah. Come on, you getting ready to say something? Yeah, I was. Uh, man, that was that was that was that was that was very. Uh, can y'all hear? That story is interesting. Oh, hold on, Mark. Can you guys hear? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Mark. I'm sorry. Okay. So I was just thinking about uh, the the lady that was speaking and. and her daughter, and most times, I was just thinking how most times when you still, when children still have that anger, it, you know, that coming from a place where they're young with their father like that, a lot of times it just comes from a lack of understanding, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's just coming out the wrong way. Like, sometimes children really just don't understand, you know, why weren't you there? You know, even though you may be giving out reasons or this, and that's the thing, like, you know, when we're, when we, as human beings, when we're out here and we're, and we're having these children, you know, the first, if, if we're planning to have children, then we should know that once you take on a, 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 a decision like that, the child is the most important thing that's about to happen to you. Um, but sad, but sadly, we are, we as a people, we as black people, we are, we have been in a condition where we haven't always planned our pregnancy. We haven't always planned, as men, we haven't planned to have children. You know, and as women, we haven't, you know, we haven't planned to get pregnant. We were just out there doing what we do. And as a result of that, we didn't come into the relationship with the proper mindset to actually be a father or to actually, you know, you know, be a mother at that time. But we have to grow into it for the mother it's more of a forceful thing because you actually have the child. For the father, it's not it's not always the case. Especially if you're not together anymore. He's not forced to become that father because he can come and go. Yeah. And so for the father it has to be more purposeful. Yeah. Because when you leave, when we leave, you know, then that's all the child remembers is that you left, is that you weren't there. You may have had your reasons. Like, you know, this guy, uh, was incarcerated 15 years, and who knows the surrounding circumstances to the situation, you know, he may have just been young and didn't understand totally, you know, what type of system he was facing and what type of odds were stacked against him as a young black male in this country, because that was a reality. And then you get into the situation and you realize the gravity of the situation. But by that time, now the child just doesn't have a father. And that's mm-hmm. all the child knows. Mm-hmm. And it's just going to take work on his on his part. He hopefully he has established a relationship with God, and I would just say to him, if I could speak to him today, I would just say, be patient. Yeah. Um, be purposeful. Keep being intentional. Keep being intentful, but be patient and yeah. allow allow the perfect timing of God to take His place. Don't force it. Uh, you as a you as a grown man have a better understanding than what your child has, and just be patient. Keep praying, be patient, and keep being purposeful. That's that's what I would tell him. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. 
That was that's yeah. good. Heart, good. Yeah. Y'all, this has been so good tonight. So good. Uh, we're gonna <laughs> go to this last one, and then we're gonna get ready to close out because we already been over time tonight. But uh, the last one is about the importance of expressing ourselves clearly. You know, I know the Bible says with all of our getting, you know, we need to make sure to get a good understanding because everything is not always as it appears to be. And sometimes we think that, oh, you know, I'm ready for our relationship. I'm ready for this and that. But are you really ready? Because you have to ask the question. Uh, I remember Bishop Jakes was talking about, you know, like, say, for instance, when they get ready to do warm and die loose. He said some people think that, you know, if the choir is ready, that they're ready. He said, but the ushers ain't ready. Parking lot people ain't ready. All of that. He said, it's only until you have a pan panoramic view or a vision for what that's supposed to look like. Can you say that we're ready to launch off? And I think that what happens a lot of times with us, we want to move forward. And God is saying, no, not right now. Yes, and sir. we keep going back to God about why, Lord, I'd have done all this. I'd have done all this. I'd have become abstinence. I'm paying my tithes. I'm doing all that. And it ain't got nothing to do with God saying, not right now. It could be them little kids <laughs> because you're getting ready to bring those children into an environment that if you have not counted up the cost for that, that it can endanger their life. Not only just endanger your life if you don't get a right. good understanding right. about it, but it can endanger the life of other you know, people as well. So, Ma, let's talk about that quickly here. We're going to talk about um, the importance of expressing ourselves clearly. You know, especially as, you know, as adults, children, whatever, you know, get into a place to, well, okay, let's make this thing make sense. And that's what I keep hearing tonight is that, you know, the kids are saying, let's make this thing make sense. You guys yeah. may not think that we understand what's going on in the household. We have feelings. We're close to our parents. We recognize when there's some disturbance that's going on. We don't, listen, it's not even the disturbance that's bothering us. Just help us make this thing make sense okay. understand that we are human beings and we have feelings and what you guys are going through yes it's affecting us and if you want to make a decision to get married let's make this make this thing make sense mom you want you know things like that so ma can you take us there for we got about a couple of minutes can you take us there okay so you know make this thing make sense now, what i'm, what I'm hearing with that is Like I said before, communicate with this guy and explain to them. Like, let's say, you know, this situation with this guy, right? Uh, the, 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 the father, he's not around. Right? Now, the thing is, what type of message are you communicating to the child? And sometimes, you know, sometimes we can be slick. And what I mean by that is, we, not, we may not be talking down about the father to the child, but if something comes up, we don't speak against it. We just let it ride. Sometimes, as in relationships, we get relations with these men, you know, women can relate to men, men can relate to women, and we be hurt by the, by the opposite person. And But we may, we may not be intentionally speaking down on the other person, but we let things slide that can, you know, be damaging in front of the child, and we don't stop and correct it. The child may say something slick. The child may say something like, I don't want to talk to you, and instead of the parent addressing that, because you're mad too. You're really upset with this, this with this person too. So you're not saying that yeah, your daddy not about nothing, but you're also not protecting them either. And not him as a person. What I'm saying is that the image or the idea of the position that the person plays in the child's life. You know, we have we have been conditioned as a people to really not respect uh, position or you know leadership or authority, and so you know. Being a mother and a father are positions of authority that's placed here on earth by God. And these ideas or these concepts have to be respected and they have to be protected, especially in the presence of the child. It's not so much that you're protecting the person, you're protecting the position. Yeah. And like, remember, if the person, if the child is disrespecting the position of the father, how long will it be before he disrespects the position of the mother? Yeah. Not saying that he's disrespecting you, or he may not even disrespect the position of the mother, but he may disrespect the position of the wife. Or he may disrespect the position of the older brother or the uncle, the position that God puts in our lives where we fail to, you know, check these things because we are upset with the person. 
we are real people, but we also hold titles in life in these children's lives. Yeah. And That's these right. titles, respect, we must respect the child's respect for the title. Because as children, when we're born into this world, we don't really know what's what. And That's we right. automatically come into it, you know, looking to older people, and we like, listen. But when we sense things are not correct, we'll begin to disrespect those positions. Uh, and if it's not being checked at that time, it'll just continue to go on and go on and go on. And so sometimes, you know, we have to, as the hurt person, whoever it may be, we have to check our own ego. Get, get ourselves out of the situation, out of the equation, let the love of God come into the position, and uh, teach the child to respect the position of the father. Although he may not be acting in that complete capacity, we must understand that that's the capacity that God has put in his life. That's right. So although the woman may not be acting like a mother, you don't treat her like she's acting. You treat her as the position that God has put her in. That's right. And so you teach the child to respect the mother, although the mother may not be acting in a respectable way. And same thing for the father. And then you let the rest, you do your part with God and the child, and you let the rest, him or her, you let them do their part with God. You can't control what they do, but you can definitely be in control and in charge of what you do. And you, as a steward of the child, it's upon the single parent, whether it's a, you know, the father or the mother, to teach the child respect for these positions. Amen. Amen. That's good, Ma. That's really yes, good. Yes, you did. Yeah. It, it, it does. That That's something that we have to start thinking about. You know, will you still honor them and respect them? I, I always think about like Jessica's uh, dad. And I, one of the things that we agreed upon is that though we did not stay together, we both had to respect the position that we were in. You know, you don't get a chance to disrespect him. She don't get a chance to disrespect me because like Amon said, it's the position that you hold. And I think it's very important. And once the child knows, okay, that's a father, though he's not my father, I respect the position that he's in. Oh, that's a mother. Oh, she's not my mother, but I respect the position. He said, oh, that's a grandmother. Oh, it's not my grandmother, but I still respect the position that they're in. And I think when we do that, we teach them the respect for mankind all that's together, right. even if it's yeah. pastors or whatever. Right. Some children right. don't respect pastors because mom and dad don't respect pastors. So it's like they'll go around, cuss around them, do all mm -hmm. kind of stuff around them because there was no respect that was shown on another level, you know, for that's those right. things. So. I think it's a lot of work that we got to do as we are getting prepared for what it is that God has called us for, you know, because we don't want to get into these places to become bl blindsided uh, to something and say, I didn't know, I didn't know, you know, well, I don't know what happened or, or you're not being a good example to them. Not, it's not, I, I think that's up to us to make sure that we present, you know, individuals before our children. Uh, that are good examples to us, first of all, before we try to make them good examples to our children. So that's it's true. a lot. Yeah. Anybody have any final things on that? This, that's, this has really been good. Any comments, guys? This is the Tamara. I, the only thing that I would say is that, first off, wonderful conversation. It has helped me, um, especially as a single mother, raising raising children and raising a son. Um, but I think to, to the comment I put in the chat that there is, it's a two-sided coin when it, when it comes to understanding and comprehending the situation. I think that children begin to understand what's going on, but they really can't maturely comprehend what's going right. on. And that, and that begins to cause a lot of confusions where they have to fill in the blanks so we're not talking about it, we're not telling them about it, or they're just plain out not mature enough to understand the gravity of the situation. And so this has been so very helpful, so very enlightful. I thank you, Ama, and um, everybody. It's just been really helpful. And then I would also speak to what Tamika was saying. I so agree with her. Although the relationship between my son, his father, and myself did not work, I did not allow that to get in the way of my son and my son's father's relationship. Because although he was not a good man to me, did not mean that he was not going to be a good father to him. Um, and That's so right. I know we put up a lot of, um, I need to protect my baby type things, but I think also in doing that, that we're sheltering them from a lot because 
my son needs to understand the difference in character, integrity, what to expect and what to do with disappointment if he doesn't receive what he expected. And so I have to allow him to be around his father so he can come to that conclusion. Is this the type of man I want to be around? Is this the type of right. man I want to be? Or is this something that I just take, what's the good, what you say, Miss Mary, a lot of times, take out, eat the fish, spit out the bones. Oh, and so that's, that's right. just kind of a that's right. situation. When it, comes to, when it comes to my thinking, I never wanted to, to be that type of baby mama. You know what I'm saying? So um, I, I, I kind of speak to what Tamika was saying. I can so relate to that because they are a part of them. And if I'm talking down about their fathers, then I'm talking down about them. That's right. That's, right. That's, that's true. Good. That's good. 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 Good conversation, y'all. Oh, great. Anybody, great. Y'all know I hate to cut this call off. But this <laughs> is so, so good. Anybody else have anything? And then I'll let Maud have the final words for tonight. You know, I, I just want to say this. I just think as men and women of God, all these children are ours. And we have to be impactful not just our own, all children's. We have to come and raise our system that God calls us to help with all of these kids. Right, Joe. That's what that's my thoughts on that. So we raise that and 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 do the will of the Father. All kids yeah. are welcome here. And we can do things to guide them properly. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> That's that, that's that standing in the gap when we know that males are not around or whatever. And that's just our God, that's our God ordained position, you know, to take care of those that are without father, without mother or whatever the case may be. So there'd be no lack. So I think that there is an elevation that needs to take place in the local churches as well, you yes. know, that we make sure to get in our proper places. And you see, you know, look, Johnny off track or whatever the case may be. You know, and he's speaking to you like you don't have authority to say anything to him. Just understand that he's not speaking to you. He's speaking to a pain or she's that's speaking right. to a pain that's within them. And don't take it so personal and say, oh, these kids don't want to listen to nobody. They don't want to mm -hmm. hear anything. Just understand. I don't believe that. To, yeah, I don't either. They're speaking to a pain. And if you give them time and you keep showing up, because listen, right. they, you, they used to people not showing up. Yes. So if we don't show back up, it's like, well, that ain't nothing lost. But if you keep showing up, you get a chance to show them something different and you open up a trust factor within them so that they can release the hurt. They can release the pain, you know, all of those kinds of things. Uh, Miss Tiffany. Yes, ma'am. And thank you for being on the call with us tonight. Um, No, no problem. Um, Hold on. OK, um. I, I want to know, like, is there is there something, is there like a some kind of uh, program where um, I'm going to say uh, be, because I'm I'm a uh, OK, how do I put this? Is, is, is there something out there where like black boys and girls can go and they have like like they have like field trips and they get taught like certain things like something like some type of mentorship for um for for children who don't have their fathers like a like in, in other words something where they can like fill the void and they can still have that father figure around to to be there and do things um even though their biological father um you know may or may not be around maybe they're around but they might be on drugs maybe they're you know abusive maybe maybe they're just I don't know they're they're just irresponsible whatever the issue is like it's I just, I just wonder if there's something like that out there for these kids um the only reason why I, I said um black boys and girls is because unfortunately according to the statistic the uh statistics uh, black children are are the ones that end up that there are uh, has a higher percentage of um, you know absent fathers. So that's the only reason why I did that. I just I just wonder if there's if there's something out there that that we can like take our kids to like 
I don't know if churches have it. I, I just don't know. And if there isn't something like that out there, like it's some, something, it needs to be done. Um, That's right. That's right. Like I just, I, I wish, I wish that I'm just going to pick a day. For example, I don't know, Sunday nights. I wish that there was something um, that I can, somewhere I can take my, take my kids and they, they get, they get to see what, what a, a good father um we hear your pain uh, tiffany go yes, ahead sir. yeah it's okay it's okay she's just concerned y'all she's hearing these comments yes, yes. absolutely absolutely um, i i wish that it was somewhere i could take them like so they, they what they have like field trips and just yeah. they get the, yeah. they get to watch in on how how the man is treating his wife, you know, like stuff like chivalrism, you know, fi- just yeah. everything, finances, just I don't know how to throw a football, how to fix certain things, just whatever. I wish that something. I wish there was somewhere we could take them, and it's like it's a group of kids, and there's a father or two, and they get to watch that. And it may, I don't care if it's a monthly fee. I don't care if it's free, which is whatever. Mm-hmm. I just feel like it needs to be done because uh, I was listening to these stories and just, I was ready to cry. <laughs> and, and I also <laughs> yeah. got my own, my own concern with my own uh, personal experiences. Um, like my, my son, um, he'll be two years old in, in August. Um, so he, he's still, he's still young, but I'm like, I'm concerned about, okay, you know, like, okay, so so what about when he's old enough to start noticing things and just, and then like, you know, for example, my my, my daughter, you know, um, you know, she's 12 and I just, I don't know. It's just, it's just a lot of, a lot of things. Like I'm just, I just, I just felt all of that. And, and that's, and that's why I'm like emotional listening to this. Cause I wish that there was like something I feel like, I know that there's not going to be a hundred percent fix all end all for everything, but I feel like something like that would be beautiful to see. And yeah. I feel like it would be really, really good. And we had something like that. So. Yeah. We, we hear your pain. <laughs> Tiffany, when I tell you, you listen, listen, you're speaking the sentiments of many young, I mean, many uh, young um, uh, single parents uh, because we know that there is an ep- epidemic of this or a lack of fatherhood that's out there and your cry is real. Yes, we need those is. kind of programs. And there are a lot of programs out there, but you got to really seek after it, Tiffany. You know, they're in almost every city, but you, I do believe you got to cry out to God about it Ask God where it is because you don't want to wait until they have to become incarcerated or they have to become, you know, this or that. You know, you want to start crying out for those things now that the Lord will begin to start bringing those mentors in their lives and that you be still and be patient and wait on God. Because when I tell you we feel your tears tonight, because many of us have been there. And we do not want to see your two-year-old son have to go through any of this kind of stuff or try to learn these things on the latter end. So I think you being here tonight was so purposeful, Tiffany, and that, you know, God really is answering prayers. But there are uh, places out there. We do, do need more black male male mentors. That's what Katamba is saying. And I do believe that if there's nothing available out there, man, I tell you, God can start a movement through people that have gone through pain just like that. And who are the best candidates to be the best mentors? It's those people that have gone through the fire and that can really teach those lessons of, you know, protecting your children and mothers be sure to, you know, have a plan of action before you start, you know, engaging in those relationships or bringing the people into the homes, all kinds of things like that. So they are out there, Tiffany. I can't tell you where they are in your area, but I know they are out there because it's a need. And then I do know that prayer, you, you hear me? She said, I think I'm, I may have to start a program myself. I wouldn't blame you. That's how I ended up starting these mentor, mentorship programs that I did because there was a lot of lack that was going on and I couldn't find it in other people. 
You know, I couldn't. And so my thing was, I'm not going to wait on somebody to come in and do something that maybe God has given me to do and that I could stop that train from moving out like that. So that may be your calling. That's 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 right. Yeah. Um, Ahmad, do you, go ahead, Tiffany. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. I just uh, I, I just been thinking about uh, you. You right. That it may be my calling. I've, I've been thinking about it for for a while. And it's just. It's just, I just known so many, so many people, men and women that you're not having a father around. It really affects us as an adult in a whole lot of ways. Like, for example, you know, running into a grown man who don't know how to tie a tie, like, Mm. or, you know, some, some people don't even know how to ride a bike. I mean, it's just so much stuff. Just it's just it's a lot. Some people don't know how to don't know how to write a resume. Don't don't know how to don't know how to uh, eat properly with a with a with a fork and a knife. It's a lot. Take your it's time. A whole lot. Take your time. Here, I do believe it's, that maybe it's cold. Oh it's just, it's so much, I can't even, this is just stuff that I'm just thinking of just off the top of my head. And and all that stuff, it, it comes from not having a father around. All that stuff that I just named, all that stuff. Amen. You know, Amen. all of it. Man, well, I'll tell you, God's not through with this conversation, Tiffany. You know, I do believe yeah. that if that is definitely something that God is placing on your heart, he's not going to let you go to bed with it. He's not going to let you, yeah. you know, rest. He's going to keep putting it on your heart. And and kind of like what I did, I started a movement, you know, to where God could use me in those. Days. And believe me, what you don't know how to do, God's place some people around you. You may have the vision for it, Tim- Tiffany, but there may be other people that carry out the vision, especially when it comes down to young boys out there. Sometimes you got to get mothers that will come together and talk about it. What are the issues? What are the things that you're needing? I mean, where are some examples that we have? Where are these business owners that are out there? Where are these people that we have seen as models, which makes us know that there are people out there like that? How do I find these people? You got to let your mind go there so that God can begin to start creating that type of movement and an environment with you. And I'll be on, listen, I'll be on the, on the ballot with you to help out with that particular program there. So, uh, but guys, I want to say thank y'all so much. Oh my God, this is so good, but I know we got to let y'all go. Uh, Ahmad, <laughs> do you have any final words with us for tonight before we close out? And y'all yeah, let I'll me, hold, hold on one second, Ahmad. Please type in, the, every time he has to go off and come back on, I think it moves a little bit. So if y'all would, as soon as he start talking, will you please type in and let me know if you can hear him or not? So we won't have to, the, he, y'all won't miss anything. Okay, go ahead, Ahmad. Okay, can I be here? Am I being heard right now? Can you guys hear? Yes, we can hear. Good deal. Uh-huh. Good deal. Okay, Mark, go ahead. Okay, um, I would say, you know, we can go to the speaker on the problems that we see. I remember she was Tiffany, she brought up um, black mentorship. And we're, and we're talking about, you know, this is the problem. The problem of not having, you know, these male, these, these strong black, you know, male role models around. And it's good and important that we talk about that. And it's also good that we talk about how we got into this condition. We can't can't discuss one without discussing the other, how we got here. Because if we do that, then the narrative that has been put to us is that black men are just no good. And whoever started that lie is an enemy to the black family. Because it wasn't a black woman who said that. Because there are countless of black women who will tell you that's not true. So that's who right. told you that? That's right. You know, one of the things she brought up was that, you know, her two-year-old son, it made me reflect to, in Revelation, it talks about the dragon who is awaiting the pregnant woman so that when she delivers, you know, birth, he's waiting to devour the child. You see, so even at two years old, He's already, you know, being, being, you know, whether it's, you know, subconsciously, you know, being done, the enemy is there, awaiting. You know, the enemy mind is that is, is what I'm talking about, the mindset. 
uh, is already there waiting on this young black, you know, child. You know, so we can't think that, oh, he's two, so, you know, I, I have a little time. No, you do not. No, you do not have time. The time is yeah. now. That's right. That's the thing. You know, so the time is now to be the change that you want to see happen. That's right. You know, and uh, one of the things, you know, so I want to re- uh, reiterate this. Let's not talk about the problem without talking about how we got into this condition. You know, right. the black family has been under attack since we have been into this country. And that's just fact. That's not opinion. Uh, history will tell you, present day conditions will still tell you what's going on. You see, right now we have officers who are always so brave when they come into contact with black men who are unarmed. But what was your bravery when you were, you know, faced with a man with a gun who was killing children? That's right. Where was your bravery at then? You were so brave to shoot this man in the back 28 times, 60 times, unarmed while he was fleeing away from you. But when you had gunshots coming your way, you stood down. So let's talk. So, you know, you know, the thing is, you know, as a black family, we have to take the time to protect ourselves. So let's protect these black men and their images. The black male image is not that of he is just no good in and of itself. He has been placed to a condition. These drugs that flood in these communities, they did not just appear there. They happened by purpose and intent. These prisons that are filled to the max did not just pop up. They happened by purpose and intent. You see, and so we must be purposeful and intentful when it comes to dealing with this enemy of ours, this mentality, this mentality that, you know, no third party you know, calls that began when the Supreme Court ruled in the Dred Scott decision that black people in America are just not human beings. Mm. You see, right. this is what we're dealing with. We think that because we have went through civil rights movement, we have got about a slavery, that we have escaped our condition. But present day is telling us, no, you have not. Right. It may not be as up in your face as it was at one point in time, but it still exists. And so what we must do as, you know, black single mothers, you know, black single fathers, or fathers who are not around, is you have to become more intentful about the relationship with your people. That's right. Become more loving with your people. That's right. Become more caring with your people. If you are a father out there, you on this call, hey man, love your black child. That's right. Love your Love the mother of your black child. Although you may not be in love with her, have a love for her that comes from God that says that, hey, man, we may not be able to make it in a relationship, but my love for us as a people is so strong that I'm not going to tear you down. I'm not going to tear this family down. I'm going to be present. Yeah. I'm going to be there. And, 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 and if you are a black male or black man that does not have children, then have enough love in your heart for your people to be a mentor. Oh, yes, Lord. Stand in the gap. Be there. So, don't you see what's going on? Don't you see that we are still under attack? That's right. Be there. Have some love. And that's it right there. <laughs> Drop the mic. <laughs> mic drop. Mic drop. <laughs> that's it. Oh, my God. That that's was good. Way, that's that the way to close it out. That's the way to close it out. That's the way to close it out. Well, Maude, we want to say thank you so much for joining us tonight and everybody that came in tonight. I think it was on purpose that we get here because, y'all, yes. we trying to, what we've been talking about, get a, get ahead of that thing. You know, don't keep allowing the same situation to keep taking place and keep repeating itself. And, you know, we think that, you know, oh, well, I'm not going to be like them or whatever. We got a repeated cycle of something that's yeah. taking place. Yes, because I was like 20 minutes late. <laughs> yeah, we got a repeated cycle of something that's going on that if we don't break the back of that thing, it's going to keep on getting into our homes. And before long, we're going to repeat these stories and we got to keep telling our kids the same things. And we got to eventually get in there and deal with the enemy that's up underneath all of this. So, uh, yeah, that movement is so needed, Tiffany. And, you know, anybody else that you got boys that 
you know, you want to get into a cause like that, this is definitely a great time, Mr. Joe. All of that. I know Joe loves working with these young men. Uh, anything that you can do, reach out. Listen, y'all, I reach out all across the world. I don't reach out just in my area. I'm going to go, listen, I'm going to go on Eventbrite. I'm going to go on Zoom. I'm going to go on Facebook. I'm going to go on anywhere <laughs> and find out who has a passion for these types of things. And then let's get involved in a movement and move forward with it. Amen. 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 So, yeah. Well, y'all, let's get ready to close out tonight. Oh, my God, it's been so good. Uh, Ahmad, <laughs> do you want to close us out in prayer tonight? We might well let you go on the rest of the way and close us on out. <laughs> no, you, no, you better add it than me. <laughs> <laughs> amen amen well father we thank you so much lord god for just you know blessing us to be able to get on this line thank you for defeating that enemy that didn't want to let us get on here yes, thank you so yes. much for the innovation. Yeah. thank you so much for the ideas of trying this and trying that father we are a power packed family when we come together with all these innovative ideas so thank you so much for our mod i pray lord god that you would bless him beyond measure Amen. All of the nuggets that he's poured out to us tonight. Father, he is he is another Joe out there. He loves the women because he loves his mother. And I do believe, Lord God, sometimes we got to get the nectar out of the poison, Lord God, yeah. so that the serum out of the poison so that we can go back and treat the case. Sometimes it takes men like Ahmad to come in and tell yeah. the truth about things on the heel side of it. And yes. so, Father, we take those words that have been spoken and we let that that stuff, we let it just resonate in our hearts all throughout the night. And let us get serious about what you've called us to be as parents. It ain't about trying to find a mate and all these other things. Let us make sure to keep the main thing, the main thing. And yes, Father, yes. if there's a place in our heart, Father, that you are calling us into a passionate area called mentorship and wanting to jump in there, this two-year-old baby, Lord God, his mother is so concerned about him right now. Not just him, but he's, she's concerned about her daughters as well. She came in right at the right time, Lord God. Yes that you would even stir up her heart, Lord God, for even such a movement as this. I pray, Lord God, that you would continue to let those words and that vision and that revelation, you didn't touch her heart for nothing tonight, but just yes. don't let her rest until something is done. I pray for the help to come in, Lord God, that will get involved in the movement with her. If it's nothing else but bringing those male mentors into our life that would help her to see life through different lenses, Lord God, help her to know that help is on the way. And Father, wherever that help will come from father we're so appreciative father protect these households lord god in the name of jesus even as we sleep tonight because the enemy is still attacking our men even though we got them covered in our homes father we can only cover them so far i pray for my grandson james father he's so protected right now but we can't always protect him when he gets out there in the real world so, Father, I pray that you would allow him to be sensitive to the voice of another male and that he will be able to reach out and understand that that loud voice, that's just who they are sometimes. I pray, Lord God, that you would allow him to stand up in who you have called him to be. Not only just James, but other young men that are out there, grandmothers that are praying for their grandsons and their boys. Lift them up, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We pray for the mothers to loose those holes on them boys. Don't hold them so tight to where they don't find out about what male, what, what the male gender is all about. And Father, even help us to be more mindful in our households, how we treat one another, mothers and fathers, absent fathers, absent moms, whatever the case may be. Help us to be about our father's business. Help us to love one another, Lord God, with the love of Christ. And Father, so that our households can be healed. We pray healing in every home. Because there are some places that need to be restored, need to be broken. There are some broken relationships with the boys and their fathers and the and the daughters and their sons, daughters and their, and their mothers. Father, do a work in all of our lives because we don't want these children to have to go through therapy or having to be incarcerated or locked up or whatever the case may be. Well, Father, when we can do those things right here, Lord, for, help them to forsake not the assembling of going to the church either because we yes. need one another. 
We need that faith-based industry in our in our lives, Lord God, so that they can help. We pray for the mothers of the church to stand up, those mothers in Zion, to get about your business and stop worrying about what these children are saying and how they look and all of that. They may not even be talking to you. They're talking to a pain. We lift up these fathers also, Lord God, that we all will get in our respective places. So, Father, bless us tonight. We know we got to go tonight, but we can talk to you all night long. So, bless us tonight <laughs> as we get ready to leave. And we pray, Lord God, that we forever be in your presence, even about this conversation tonight. So, until we meet, it, meet again, meet us back in this place, Lord God. Y'all, one last thing. Let us all say happy birthday to Ahmad at 12 o'clock midnight. This young man will be 37 years old. So we oh. sing happy birthday to Ahmad and we appreciate him for all that he is doing in all of our lives. So all thank you, Ahmad, right. from the bottom of our heart for all that you do. In Jesus' name. Y'all want to say, y'all want to say happy birthday to him right quick. Happy birthday to yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Amen. Thank yeah. y'all so much. And we'll meet y'all back again on next Thursday night at 7 o'clock p.m. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bye. Amen. Bye-bye. <laughs> Good night. Hey.